Ethan, fish on. Fish on right now. Fish on right now. Yeah, no, reel it in and set the hook. There you go. Keep it off the keep it off the dock. It's good. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a big fish. No, there's no chance. There's no chance. There's no chance. Oh my goodness. Hold on, hold on, maybe. Get, get. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> You could literally hear the moment was his heart big, breaks in half. Fish. I, I've only got 10 pound test on here. Hmm. Okay, Ethan, Ethan take, take this for a second. Hold on, hold on. Can I stop a make sure we're, we're, we're Make sure we're live everywhere. As we all enjoy a moment of sadness, followed yeah, by hook, much it's, happiness. It's a tiny circle hook. That, it won't do any damage, but... It was it was a like a I don't know a half. That was a big flipping fish, however. That was a big flipping fish. It was a snakehead, by the way. Now let me just make sure. I think we're live. There was no there was no chance that you couldn't haul that thing over the. No, because he was down at the end, and he saw you guys catch. I think a lot. He he made his way down. Like Little bastard. There's a there's a metaphor in there. The the alligator is the government. You could have done nothing except what you did. And it takes your oh, hard-earned oh work and breaks your heart. That was look at look at it. Look at the fat part of its neck right now, by the way. What's from? Do you have a picture of the fish? I think I got I got, oh, the, I got okay. the better part of the video, I think, but that was huge. That was wild. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Oh, you can see the fish going down its neck. Like, oh, I'm done. Bubble, bubbles out of my teeth. That's a burp. And wait for my next one. That was a gator burp. That's a personal best. We will estimate the size of that fish based on the video recording. Oh, he's a Oh, yep. That's a first. It, 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 one of the gators came close the other day. This little bastard got it because we hooked a giant snakehead. Uh, snakehead, for those of you who don't know, they're like long, eel-like looking fish. They got like wide mouths. They kind of look like basses that started getting sucked into a black hole and then managed to escape. Can we see it again? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Hold, hold on just one second. Someone in the chat asked if we can see this again. How could I say no? Well, I could say no if I can't find the flipping video again. Uh, this was at a place called Loxahachi, and there's gators there all the time. And um, they sit there like a, like, a, like a bunch of poachers, just waiting for someone to get something big. If you have heavy enough line, you know, you could just rip the fish in, haul it in. Um, we did not have heavy enough line. Look at this. Hold on. And you can see the fish thrashing. Like, it's a little circle hook. Gets in there, hooked it in. Mm. You can fish on. Fish on right now. Fish on right now. Yeah, okay. no, reel it in and set the hook. Look at tug in, boom! Look at that rod. Keep it off the keep it off the dock. It's good. Look at, and look at the splash. Oh my goodness, that's a big fish. You hear the tr you hear the crowd like, ooh. No, no there's no chance. and incoming. There's no chance. There's no chance. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and then oh, you hear and then you hear everybody in the everyone in the crowd. Oh, the moment the child's heart breaks. He, the kid's very happy because that's a once in a lifetime memory. Link to tweet here, people. Oh my goodness, it's another Sunday night. I will be as honest with the entire world as I have been with our uh, locals community. Oh no, I was texting this with somebody this morning. I have been feeling increasingly despaired and I'll try to smile about it. We're living through insanity. It doesn't feel like it's getting better and it sometimes does feel like it's getting better, but then it goes and gets one step worse. And I understand Twitter is not the real world by any means. The forces at play in the social media Twitterverse, the battle for information, the battle for minds, and the battle to promote disinformation, and the battle to cause despair, and to cause, what is it called? Demoralization, is stronger than ever. Uh, and I, I, like, how bad does it have to get before people say it's bad enough now and I'm waking up? We're going to talk about the Trump stuff. We're going to talk about everything that's going on in America. Twitter is upside down, but you, uh, like, I, I didn't, uh, uh, look, okay, I'll, I'll start with this. I was going to start with, with The Rock because we're seeing what happens when people start to think for themselves. You had a little too much to think. And um, let me make sure I get the right video. And The Rock came out and uh, he, is he going to learn? 
Is he going to learn or is he going to pull a little, um, I'm trying to think of who else goes back and tries to placate the mob. Not J.K. Rowling, that wouldn't be fair. Oh, The Rock, A, went on Fox News. That's already what an apostate does. He went on Fox News and he said this. I think this is three days ago. The, the ripples and the tsunami is still washing over the interwebs. You made that endorsement in 2020. Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then, when we talk about, hey, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence, and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. Am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. You made that in and with that, you? with that rather attenuated, rather innocuous statement, The Rock just, um, I don't want to use any hyperbolic comparisons or rhetoric. The Rock might have had too much to think. And The Rock might now be realizing that the tolerant, loving left are about as tolerant and loving, peace-loving left as a uh, Democrat is the people's democracy of China. I can't think of a good example. I got to get a good example. The Chinese Communist Party, the, the People's Republic of, of China, or something like that. The, the tolerant left has frothingly unleashed on the rock for that statement. The statement was pretty innocuous. He said, look, yeah, at that point in time, it was the right endorsement for me. Some people might disagree with the fact that because you have influence doesn't mean you have to say things. Uh, because if you don't know what you're talking about, having a platform to influence people is a sort of a double-edged sword if you don't have the information, the baseline knowledge to properly influence people. And so just because you have a platform doesn't mean you have to use it. Just because you have a crowbar in the garage doesn't mean you have to smash a window with it. But other than that, a pretty, pretty innocuous statement, you would think, one would think. Um, they have unleashed on him. They have, a, what's this one? Dwayne The Rock Johnson is about to go through some things. This isn't going to work out the way he thinks it will. What the hell does that mean? I mean I'm not picking on like random people. 47,000 followers. It might, might not even be a real person. Just a bot on, it might just be a bot on Twitter. I might be getting frustrated at bots on Twitter. I know there's a ton of them on my own feed. Just like robo-responses, anti-Trump, mega, whatever the heck. You're all, you know, it might just be a, 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 um, a robot responding. But the engagement, and you, oh, I can't do that. You go look at it. Dwayne The Rock says he wanted, sorry, that's not right. He's going to go through some things. What the hell does that mean? This isn't going to work out the way he thinks. Oh, I know that's a, a nifty little double entendre. Oh, no, that's not a threat. I'm just saying, you know, if Trump gets elected, he's it's not going to. Now, this is somebody is thinking for themselves. Uh, uh, an ethnic minority is thinking for themselves. And the I don't want to say they're all exclusively Caucasian white women. Um, but there's a certain trend. I mean, it probably is reflecting the demographics of the states at large. There's a certain trend going on here. You see what this one's doing here. He doesn't care about black folks. How ironic. I, I, do, am I dealing with a real person? Who the hell knows? Just bots coming out now. Now the bot machine is against the rock or real people are coming out and saying, you were an ally, the rock. How dare you come out and say, is America in a better place now than it was four years ago? Oh, I don't know. You know, war in the Middle East, war in Russia. Uh, uh, record numbers of young Americans dying from fentanyl overdose and uh, an open border. Oh, I don't like the word open border because it's actually checkpoint. Piss off. An open border south of the border that's let in how many? 10 million people in the last four years? Uh, oh, yeah, but they caught a few. They caught a few people on the terror watch list. That's a great indication. Oh, America is not better now than it was four years ago. Am I sharing uh, Dwayne's optimism? I hope so. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have placed the bets that I'm placing with my feet and, you know, feet and, and, and livelihood. Um, so yeah, we can remain optimistic, you know, hope for the best plan for the worst. But is America better now than it was four years ago? Oh, oh, the, only, the only people saying it is are the Keith Olbermans of the world, are the blue checkmark Hollywood types of the world, are the TDS-inflicted nincompoops 
of the world who would do anything but admit that things are worse now than they were before. On the brink of World War III, on the brink of bankruptcy. I don't know how many trillions of dollars in debt. I don't know, but it's, and then the guy comes out and says the obvious, and the frothing, unhinged lunatics of the left turn on the rock the way that alligator turned on that fish, although they were never aligned. Oh, people. So that's that. That was the intro. I got another thing that I wanted to talk about. I want to talk about Tommy Robinson because it's all sort of it's all sort of looping together. Yeah. It's it, it, look at what's going on in Europe when you have rampant, um, unregulated immigration. Forget open you know open borders invasion where you don't even know who the hell is coming in. I had Tommy Robinson. Tommy, 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 oi, oi, oi. And for all you jackasses who think it's a gotcha that it's not his real name, shut the hell up. You guys are morons. Like you are low level um, trolls, low information level trolls, thinking that your stupid talking points that are about a decade old work on anybody except people who are as dumb as yourself. I had Tommy Robinson on on Friday. We had a two hour mind blowing interview. And I thought Tommy's shit had hit the fan back in the day when he was jailed for contempt, sentenced to 13 months in jail after a two-hour hearing, after being arrested the day of for doing journalism on the street and recording some criminal defendants going in for the, the grooming gang. And I thought, the sh that, I thought that's as bad as it got for him. And boy, have I missed the last two years of Tommy's life. So Tommy told me to go watch the... There's a leaked documentary. On, it's on Rumble. I, I shared the link with everybody before we got started here. I'll share it again. Because Tommy's like, you, you go watch this documentary, Silenced. There's the link, everybody. It'll blow your mind, Viva. It's like, you, you, thought, you thought it was bad with the grooming gangs and getting sentenced to 13 months in jail after a two-hour hearing for contempt. Yeah, I, and I'd say, when that happened, people, understand, that's the UK. That's not North Korea. That's not NK. That's the UK. Tommy Robinson picked up off the street, live streaming, I don't care who he was live streaming and I don't care what court order he allegedly uh, violated because he didn't violate any, swept up off the street, brought before a magistrate, within two hours, sentenced to 13 months in jail and he went straight to jail and took six weeks for him to get his first meeting with his counsel. UK, not NK. Tommy said, you think that's bad? Go watch Silenced. Silenced is a documentary that he made to deal with the latest scandal that has been uh, impacting him, which is back in the day, in the UK, this is relatively recently, they had an incident that is akin, it's, it's analogous to the Nicholas Salmon, Covington Catholic kids scandal, disinformation silo that we had you know, eight years ago now. If you don't know about this, there was, there was a story coming out of the UK of a Syrian refugee boy who was allegedly, um, uh, what's the word, bullied by a couple of white boys who pinned him down and poured a bottle of water over his face and the 10 second video went viral exactly the same way the Covington Catholic Nicholas Salmon 10 second clip went viral, or I think it was actually just a screen a photograph, except there were no breaks on the scandal out of the UK. There was no right wing media. There were no independent journalists uh, writing that wrong, correcting the story, calling it out on social media. In the UK, this kid, I don't remember his name. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, a Syrian refugee. 10 second video clip of two white kids pouring water on his face. The video clip goes viral. It's called Two Racist Boys Waterboarding, waterboarding a Syrian Refugee. The media runs with it. Pierce Morgan of the world runs with it. Pierce Morgan calls the 12 year old white kid vermin who needs to be, you know, face repercussions for this. The, the, the journalists, the politicians, the entire machine runs with this. And Tommy Robinson comes out and says, This is, I'm getting information that this is not the whole story. And he goes and gets a little more information and then says, oh, yeah, this, this kid who's claiming to be the victim of being waterboarded and the media is running this off as a racist, anti-immigrant, far-right attack. Turns out the kid is allegedly a little bit of a problem child, uh, allegedly a little bit of a misogynist, allegedly assaulted one of his classmates by hitting her over the back with a hockey stick, allegedly was threatening to sexually assault a number of students, and allegedly the younger sister of the boy who was pouring water on his face, where if you listen to that clip, you can hear him say, you don't have much to say now. What do you have to say now? And so Tommy Robinson comes out and says, this is the true story, not what the media is telling you. And then Tommy Robinson gets sued for defamation. And then he, 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 he is preparing his court case and puts together this documentary called Silence.
because the people who initially gave him the information as to what actually happened, what this kid was actually like, that this was all an orchestrated ploy to manufacture a, a race baiting controversy. None of them want to talk to him all of a sudden when it comes time to go to court. And so he makes this documentary where he puts it in an undercover camera. And I try, I try to steal, man, how this documentary is propaganda. I try to steal, like, like how is he, how is he crafting the story now? How is he manipulating whatever? Just because I, I'll, I'll scrutinize it that way as well. I can't really find a good way that he's scrutinizing, that he's manipulating or being dishonest in the documentary. He puts together this documentary and then uh, attempts to, from what I understand, present it to the, to the court and gets an injunction enjoining him from publishing the documentary. The documentary, which has undercover footage of school staff saying this kid was a bad seed. Uh, other people saying they got paid to be quiet. The, 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 the girls who said that they were assaulted by this kid, uh, harassed by him, they had to take down their social media posts because they were getting threatened. They had to go into hiding. And so I watched this documentary and you realize that this is what happens when the system goes batshit crazy, when there are no checks and balances on the dishonesty. I don't know if Pierce Morgan has um, ever apologized for that. This is the link. And so I don't know how the documentary got leaked. It is currently on Rumble. And it's wild. Silence. The documentary Silence has been silenced. Link to Doc on Rumble. And, um, you know, Nicholas Sandman, but for the countervailing forces or the, the pushback, this is what it would have been. A story where people went crazy, where people were wrong, where people said stupid things because of identity politics, who would not have been forced to correct themselves if the entire apparatus was set up to protect them. In the UK... Can you imagine these, these politicians? I think Theresa May was one of them, but I don't want to make mistakes on names. Politicians got up on the international scale, the international scene, and said this is intolerable, anti-immigrant, anti xenophobic, anti-Islamic uh, behavior. It has no place in Western society. The white kid is the demon in all of this. And there were no checks and balances to rein in the actual, apparent, allegedly true story, which was this kid by the school's account, by the parents' account, by other classmates' account, by his own school records account, was the aggressor and not the victim. But by the time the politicians have put their foot in their mouths, they would sooner eat their entire leg than take it out and say they made a mistake. And they brought the entire force of judicial, legal process against Tommy Robinson, silenced him literally, and now he's uh, preparing to go back to court on this uh, come a little after the summer to see what his fate's going to be. They bankrupted him over this with a, with, a, with a ruling because he was unable to basically pressure enough people not to testify. It'll be impossible to defend yourself when you are the enemy and the machine has turned on you. And in a, in a meaningful way, like we're seeing with Trump, there's very little you can do to protect yourself. There's very little you can do to actually defeat that machine. Which is why freedom is not about uh, um, waking the sheep. It's about mobilizing the lions. I keep screwing that expression up. Who knows? All right. With that said, by the way, um, and th that's it. So I, I might do a short review of that movie, but that might have been the review of the movie. Go check it out. I've got to watch the other one where he takes down the BBC. Um, before I get into the sponsor of the evening, let me just say hi to Little Rock. Viva, I sent an email to Robert. It could be a potential sponsor, and I'm interested in buying it. However, I want you guys to look. Little Rock, I'll go have a look on uh, Rumble Locals after this. The kid going to have a happy Gilmore moment and find out that Gator stuff didn't... No, he will not, Ian. <laughs> Cheryl Gagey, I'm waiting. I'm getting worried about the New York madness. Could they really jail Trump? They'll try. They'll, they'll try to take his assets first. I, 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 we're going to talk about what the latest is on the bond. Eclipse Day tomorrow is WEF and DOA. WEF and DOA Awareness Day. WEFDOA.com. Okay, I'll have to check that. And we got uh, Arrow Guy, 10 bucks in the house. Thank you very much. People? You may have noticed before you came in here that it said this stream contains a paid promotion. And it does because we've got a sponsor of the evening and that sponsor is TWC. It's kind of amazing that not everybody's talking about this because I sort of not raised the alarm myself, but I had the aha moment when the pandemic hit and we got kids who had certain medications. Like, holy crap, what happens if I can't get these medications? Now, this is not for everything but it's for certain things. The fact that on Thursday, March 21st, the court ruled that the FDA must delete every social media post addressing the use of ivermectin for treatment or prevention of COVID-19. It's been determined that the FDA lied. I'm like, geez, I'm needling the FDA because that, that tweet was still up there last I checked. They lied in their demonizing of ivermectin. 
and other effective drugs for the last four years, vindicating doctors like Peter McCullough, who pioneered the McCullough Protocol and stood strong despite every cancellation campaign. Speaking of cancellation. But the question is, the question so many people are still asking, how do I get ivermectin HCQ since most doctors are still not even prescribing it? This is not medical advice either, by the way. You can well, One thing is for certain, the FDA lost because they lied coming out and saying, you're not a horse, you're not a cow, stop it, y'all. Who, who's the idiot now, FDA? And, and, and the amount of the, the damage they've done, whatever. How do you get this stuff? Keep, 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 keep listening. Americans are waking up and understanding that now more than ever, we need to have life-saving medications on hand. They aren't just remedies. They are lifelines for the next time because there will be a next time. And the wellness company's contagion emergency kit complete with the McCullough protocol has you covered. The one of a kind, this prescription kit provides you with carefully assorted uh, effective medications because stuff happens, antibiotics, all this other stuff, uh, COVID-19 and other respiratory illnesses, ivermectin, HCQ, z pack budesonide, along with the nebulizer and a guidebook for safe use. Backed by research and endorsed by world-renowned experts, the wellness company's contagion emergency kit is a must-have. You know what the amazing thing is? The media is going to try to like demonize this contagion emergency kit, not understanding that, you know, every, this is basically just a, uh, I will say on steroids, although it's quite an out. This is just a souped up um, emergency kit. What do they call those things? Are they called emergency kits? I haven't used one in a long time. You know, the thing that had Band-Aids, Polysporin, those stupid stretchy things, as if, as if that has ever done anything. Anyhow, this is a souped up emergency kit. Avoid the chaos, wait times, and the price of a hospital and have exactly what you need for as low as the cost of a single doctor visit. www.twc, for those listening, I have a bit of a list. TWC is Tango, Whiskey, Charlie, dot health forward slash Viva. Grab your contagion emergency kit right now. That is once again, TWC, Tango, Whiskey, Charlie, dot health forward slash Viva. The Viva code saves you $30 at checkout. Kits are only available in the US of A, these United States of America. People, we got a show tonight. As always, Barnes is in the backdrop. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am Viva Fry, David Freiheit. For anybody who thinks using my name is somehow like you're revealing my identity to the world. I ran for office in Canada, people. My name, just uh, as a little a piece of info, David Freiheit, you rearrange all those letters, it spells did it have fire or it did have fire. Kind of amazing. All the letters are in there. We start on YouTube, Rumble, and vivabarneslaw.locals.com, where we are currently live. I'm yeah, I'm looking at my ugly face right there. Bada bing, bada boom. And we end on Rum YouTube. Go over to the free speech platform, Rumble, for the rest of the stream. We then end on Rumble. And we go over to our vivabarneslaw.locals.com uh, community for an after party. Here's the link. And that's how it works. If you don't know who Robert Barnes is because this is your first episode, is there anybody watching right now who this is their first time watching Viva Fry, Viva Barnes? I need to know. And be honest. I mean, nobody's going to be honest. Forget that. It's a ridiculous question. Okay. Barnes is looking dapper. Bring him in. Here comes the Barnes peeps. Robert, sir, how goes the battle? Good, good. Uh, the uh, We had a big 5% uh, play up at uh, Sports Picks on the Final Four on Saturday. And it, like last year's 5% pick on the National Championship game, like the first round pick this year, like the second round pick this year, it was cha-ching. And we got another... 5% play on Monday night's national championship game uh, up at sportspicks.locals.com. Uh, one of the few subscription that pays for itself uh, almost within the same week. So having Robert. some fun with all the folks over there. And some of them are going to be coming out for the big bash this Saturday. Uh, Viva and Barnes. Barnes' 50th birthday bash live in Las Vegas. So everybody that's got the tickets, uh, get ready. You know, the uh, event will start at 5 p.m. go to about 10 ish uh so somewhere in that neighborhood have dinner have entertainment uh maybe viva we'll even sing a viva barnes law version of viva las vegas uh we'll see the uh, get those piano chops going the uh so the i saw the little fella uh got his fish stolen from him by an alligator or crocodile that was something to witness it was, it was amazing it was amazing an alligator not not yet the crocs those i think i would be a little more scared of robert what does a five percent play mean uh, the, what is it? Uh, we recommend you do certain percentages of your bankroll. You take a certain amount of money, put it aside, and that's your investment fund for, uh, but it's money you can afford to lose. So it's not money you, that you can't afford to lose. 
And then you bet a certain percentage of that on each individual recommended bet. Uh, so usually that's 2%, sometimes it's 1%. But when I have a lot of confidence in an outcome, when I think about that we'll win it about two thirds of the time, uh, rather than 52, you have to, to break even, you need to, you know, about 52, 53% of the time. But uh, when I feel 65% confident, then I put out a, a 5% play. Uh, and we've been hitting those at higher than 70% since we've been putting them out. So uh, we'll see if we get to cha-ching. Though sports pick subscribers, if they want to, are guaranteed a profit in the championship game because we gave out UConn to win it all before the tournament at more than two to one. And now you could bet Purdue at more than two to one. And no matter who won, you'd make money. Uh, that, that's the uh, beauty of it. Now, one last thing, actually, you, you, you remind me. Um, so Kamala Harris made the news because she's infinitely stupid. Talking about the, brackets. The women's, I, I always said, Kamala Harris, dumbest lawyer I ever, ever dealt with in court. I've been saying that since she was before she was a senator, when she was attorney general, before she was vice president. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, women's college brackets uh, weren't just created two years ago. In fact, the women's national championship uh, was just played uh, today. I didn't see who won. It looked like South Carolina won it. South Carolina wants uh, women's coach oh. wants men to be able to compete in women's sports. Oh, Robert. This, uh, this... Which, you know what? If you saw some of the South Carolina players, you know, just saying. <laughs> Robert, here. Listen to this. I, I zoomed in on her face because it's it's we got to see how. Do you know? Yeah. Okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that women were not the women's teams were not allowed to have brackets until 2022? Think about that and what that talk about progress. You know, better talk late about than never, but progress and you, what that has done. Because of course, when I, you I know, can't, I can't the whole thing, Robert. First of all, what are brackets? Like, I'm not even sure I understand. I know that what she said is actually wrong. I just don't know what brackets. No, you, are. you have a tournament. And it's the it's a, a round of sixty four or sixty eight teams technically now, uh, and the brackets are you have the one seed versus sixteen seed. It's how a team can meet up in the end, and so a lot of people like to fill those out. There's somebody's going to win a free lifetime subscription to Sports Picks, depending on what happens in the national title, because hundreds of people filled out our, our brackets uh, at Sports Picks, and that, that's what that is. But the brackets okay. have as long as there's been a tournament, there have been brackets. So uh, that it, it was an utterly inane statement, but it's typical. I mean, she's not really an American. You know, father's Jamaican, mother's Indian. She grew up in camp. She grew up in Kamida. She, uh, she grew up. She grew up, up Drew, uh, like the Kamida reference. She drew, she grew up up the street from me. Like she went to Westbound High School, which was up where I used to walk my dog. I mean, I I, I grew up in Westbound. No, it's just like, oh, first of all, like her whole demeanor is painfully stupid. Ty Fisher had a great joke. Oh, hold on, Robert. Okay, one, one, one more thing, Robert. One more thing. This is Ty, Ty the Fish Fisher, a fantastic stand-up comic, and this was the original joke. I, I, I can't say these things because I'm not a stand-up comic. But Joe he, Biden's he can. not doing good. Not doing great, man. If he wins, Kamala Harris will be the president. Don't worry, I don't do an impression of Kamala Harris. Obviously, it's not okay for a white guy to do an impression of a retarded hyena. So. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fantastic. I didn't say it, but that that's the type of humor that I like. Um, okay, so now I understand the stupidity. Robert, what's the book you have behind you? A new book out by an old buddy of mine from Yale, uh, uh, Jeremy Carl. Uh, we'll probably have him on at Sidebar at some point. I used to get into big arguments with him about populism versus elitism and so on and so forth. The uh, But uh, he's now more on the populist side of the equation than he used to be. But he's written a new book called The Unprotected Class about basically the the uh, the effort to uh, politically depopulate a large group of the population simply because their pigmentation is of a lighter variety. And so the uh, it's it's uh, he sent it to me, which was a nice uh, it's kind of a no whites allowed policy, kind of like Wisconsin State Bar just got caught doing the uh, you know, you, you, we'll be discussing that in other cases. So yeah, the uh, I haven't read the book yet. He he just sent it to me in the mail, so I'll take a look at it. But uh, but yeah, very, very smart guy, very sharp guy. Was one of the more true Trumpers uh, that got into the administration late, uh, and would have been you know more influence in a second administration had he uh, uh, had the had you know kind of like what that uh, alligator did to uh, uh, y uh, your son's uh, fish. Uh, you know, if Joe Biden hadn't stolen that election. Uh, you know, the, the uh, then Jeremy Carl probably would be in the White House as we speak. 
Um, all right. What, 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 what do we give us the menu topics or the topic menus? What, give us what's on the menu tonight, and then we'll see which one we start with. All right. We got a lot of Trump news. Uh, Trump's ready to be Nelson Mandela. Uh, it says, hey, judge, put me in jail. I'm not going to obey your unconstitutional gag order. And good logic has been studying the ability to go into court and challenge that gag order as an independent member of the New York commentator community that should have access to Trump's speech. Uh, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss uh, dis, you know, dismissal motions being denied at this stage. What does that mean in the different cases? We've got the attempts to take the bond on appeal down uh, or challenge the people that are doing the bond uh, themselves. That's how the weaponized lawfare continues. We got judicial scandals in both New York and an attempt by Jack Smith and his uh, allies, his lackeys in the media, legal press, to go after Judge Cannon for not bowing and cowering to every demand he makes. And we got an, an, a sign that Trump had some really terrible lawyers in his first term. One of Trump's own top lawyers is out there, uh, Ty Cobb, who's always been a hack. Uh, he's a guy who should be disbarred, unlike John Eastman. Uh, unlike uh, uh, Jeffrey Clark. Uh, this is a lawyer who represented the president and then shared attorney-client privilege information with a journalist, Bob Woodward. Uh, and he's out there telling everybody as a legal expert, guy's a total fraud. Uh, legal expert, that judge is going to be recused and disqualified down there in Florida for not uh, cowering to Jack Smith. What a fraud this guy is. And so many people have told me, oh, what a great defense lawyer is. He hasn't won a case worth anything. The guy's a phony. But we'll be discussing that. State bars getting caught discriminating. Uh, if you're white, you're not supposed to apply in Wisconsin. Got caught by America First Legal to, for certain internship programs. The disbarment proceedings, the sham disbarment proceedings against Professor Eastman and Jeffrey Clark continue in D.C. and California. Uh, the abortion pill before SCOTUS. Why the right's obsession with getting rid of, stand, uh, or expanding the standing doctrine to get rid of suits is going to hurt themselves in the end and cover up for the state. Uh, if you got a mugshot with a, uh, having to take off your hijab, you're entitled to $17 million plus worth of damages. They recognize that as a religious right, but not if you don't want to force your kid to be vaccinated in New York. Uh, election law reform, Zuck Bucks fails in Wisconsin. For, uh, what the implications of that may be as the lawsuits begin to proliferate against election law reforms by uh, a certain money launderer. Uh, that works for the Democratic Party. The uh, juvenile court, uh, social workers, they like to steal people's kids. They've been getting away with it, claim they had both judicial and prosecutorial immunity. Thankfully, the Ninth Circuit finally did the right thing and made clear they don't. Uh, then we got a few bonus cases, the double level of discrimination that's taking place in religious cases. We have the Amos Miller update on a brief that I filed and uh, submitted, and you can get it at vivabonslaw.locals.com, posted it there. Uh, freely available for everyone. Representative Goldman, the CIA's favorite congressman, getting sued by the Biden whistleblower. Uh, the Douglas Mackey case pending before the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. And January 6th, defendants talk, talking about bringing a class action against the corruption of the Capitol Police. I should mention this to everybody, actually, now that I, I forgot to. Um, hold on a second. Let me save this. Tomorrow night, six o'clock, Jake Lang is coming on. He's the, uh, is he the lead plaintiff on the on the class action? As far or, as I know, that's uh, so Jake Lang. We're gonna have he's gonna come on at six o'clock tomorrow night. So everybody stay tuned. Link is gonna come up after this. Robert, do we do like the Trump stuff that we should probably keep in a block and do that on Rumble? Can we do can we start with um, it'll be a little bit out of order, Douglas Mackey? Oh, sure. I think this is uh, Douglas Mackey. For those of you who don't know, Ricky Vaughn, uh, literally arrested, convicted, and is he is he currently in jail now? No, remember the Second Circuit granted him bail pending appeal. Okay, good. So he's not in jail, at least. This was the guy convicted for the meme. The meme was, uh, text your vote from home and save some time in line. Te vote your text to Hillary at whatever, blah, blah, blah. He did exactly what another another comedian did. Her tweet is still up there, last I checked, where she said, uh, the, you know, election day is the day after uh, actual election day. She became a MAGA, and everyone should go vote on November 10th, I think it was. Uh, her tweet's still up, no prosecution, whatever. Douglas Mackey, a young dude with a with a Twitter feed that everybody knew was a troll account put out this meme. He got charged in SD Southern District of New York. That's correct. Uh, no, the Eastern District of New York. Any, any better? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mar uh, 
not as corrupt in the prosecutor's department, but they chose that because the jury pool they believed would be more hostile to Mackey. So they um, arrested him, charged him, and he got convicted of, uh, 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 what was it? Not election interference, but it was disenfranchising people of their right to vote. The Klan conspiracy statute. That, that, that's what it, it historically has been called. The, 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 uh, all the commies in our legal profession uh, don't want to use that reference because then it makes it clear how asinine and absurd it is to be applying these laws. Like they're trying to apply to some January 6th defendants, like they're trying to apply to Trump in civil suits and Trump allies, and like they did to Mackey here. That this is the statute that was put on the books to stop the Klan from ballot stuffing, beating people up, burning crosses in their front law, burning their houses down, lynching. That was the voter interference they were worried about. Not memes, uh, but you know, like the commies at Yale Law School and elsewhere filed amicus briefs defending this. The, I mean, this, the terrifying thing about Mackey, Mackey's case, and we often called it the meme case because now a lot of people knew Mackey's name and then people thought we hadn't been talking about the case. We've been talking about this from the time it was mm -hmm. brought, brought many, you know, we probably have about a half dozen shows on it, the at least. But the is that they're trying to criminalize political disagreement about elections. That's what they're trying to do. And they're just assuming they'll always have the power. There's, they're assuming nobody opposed to the left will ever have the power. So the, that consequently, they don't have to worry about the, these laws being used against them. And the, even though they've done actual election interference, they've actually interfered with elections. They've actually stolen elections wait, many wait, times your, in many places. What's her face? The woman out of Jenna, Jen, Jenna Griswold. I mean, removing someone from the ballot is the very type of suing someone into you know attempting to sue them issuing into gag orders like the judges have been issuing that's a mm -hmm. that's a crime that's election interference that's criminal conduct that was intended to be covered by this criminal statute not political disagreement not internet means not jokes uh it's asinine it, they chose one of the most ludicrous cases they could bring to prove to everybody how far the law could go we can put you in prison for a meme we don't like. And the the fact that Yale Law School's, uh, uh, one of its key groups, has filed an amicus in support of this suit, pretending that it somehow doesn't violate the First Amendment, just shows you how far gone the legal academy is. There'll be a common theme here. We need to get rid of licensure. We need to get rid of state bars. That We need to get rid of the professional class's power. The lawyers are the, you know, the, in Shakespeare, the reference is meant to say that they'll get rid of the good advocates by saying, first, we get rid of all the lawyers. But now we need to get rid of all the lawyers, at least the ones, at least the degree requirement. But Robert, as a condition it, of power. These people are dangerous. But and, you know, you, you know, it's it's never going to happen. They're never going to remove licensure for things of oh, the well, professional not, class. Not unless we take mass action. No, I mean, not unless there are a broad movement builds. That's the only way it's going to happen. It's, it's, it's the only way it's going to radically change is radical action, you know, taken in, in the uh, court of public opinion to be able to change these things, to continue to expose the danger of these things. The uh, as long as they kept this quiet and limited this to a small number of people, they could get they could get away with the atrophying corruption of our judicial system and legal process. But they're so overt, so over the top, so brazen, so bold, going so, I mean, trying to do it to Trump, that they've lost their complete, they've lost the script. And they're building a blowback that is growing at exponential rates. If you would have said pre-COVID, you would have half the country skeptical of vaccines. People would have laughed you out of the room. They would have told you that's never going to happen. But the vaccines had become indoctrinated into the American belief system. Even conservatives would would mouth pro vaccine rhetoric. They oh oh I'm not part of that Alex Jones kind of thing. Oh oh no no. Today a majority I mean 95 percent of Americans refuse to take the COVID vaccine for their kids. Something has radically shifted. So uh, what what's happening is we're seeing the problem of a weaponized legal system, and the problem isn't weaponization. The problem is the legal system having too much power in the first place. Too much power to lawyers. Too much power to judges. Too much power to a professional managerial class because this this case is an embarrassment to the rule of law, well, I, an embarrassment I, to constitutional democracy. I listened to the um, it, it was a court of appeal. Um, second, uh, yes, oral argument at the Second Circuit. 
how many judges were there? Was there three, one or were there, there were three? three. Uh, one of them was extremely hostile, like where they're asking questions as to it, it was a foregone conclusion. Like, how is this not election interference? He he put out a tweet with the intention of disenfranchising people of their right to vote. And I, it's not to be critical. I mean, it didn't seem like the lawyer was getting anywhere with any form of argumentation. Were the other were all three judges pretty much equally hostile in this, uh, in this uh, hearing? We don't know. I mean, there's a lot of bad judges at the Second Circuit. But this case has a high likelihood of getting up to the Supreme Court. Uh, if the government loses, they won't take it up to the Supreme Court uh, because they know they'll lose there. Uh, but if Mackey loses, he will. And the and and there's very good grounds to the Supreme Court. And the even people that are pro this uh, the application of this law have recognized there's problems with how far this goes. And they, they supposedly they're going to limit it to just okay if you. If you have false speech about the mechanisms of an election with the intent to prevent someone from voting, then it's criminal. The problem is, uh, as we see here, if they can put somebody in prison for a meme, there's too much power in the hands of prosecutors and judges to decide what is false speech concerning the mechanisms of an election with the intent to impact their vote. I mean, I mean, everything, everybody, everything happens in an election and tends to impact somebody voting. Everything does. So, I mean, I mean, the, I mean, you could say the Willie Horton ad or any ad is meant to suppress the vote by discouraging, dissuading people to vote. And then it concerns the mechanics of an election. That's the other two issues that are being challenged. This was clear venue abuse. And it was also clear uh, vagueness problem. If, if there's no way he could, he could be on notice that this was a crime. I mean, that's patently absurd. So that's on top of the First Amendment problem. Uh, but that's where you have to go into these proceedings, uh, oral arguments, ready to be co uh, confrontational. Because you get up there and you get a rogue judge, and, and you, you got to expose it for what it is. Say, these are you political hacks making an asinine and absurd interpretation of law so that you can interfere in an election, judge. Because maybe next year there's somebody different to the attorney general, and they decide your statement right now, judge, was election interference, and they put you in prison. You like that idea, judge? Then you better think twice about this asinine, absurd application of the law. Uh, they have bastardized it beyond all recognition, and it's I mean it's going to be a common theme tonight. It's judicial abuse, judicial abuse, judicial abuse, judicial abuse, lawyer abuse, lawyer abuse, lawyer abuse, lawyer abuse. Uh, and the only lawyers that conscientiously stood up for the rule of law, they're trying to disbar because we allow a state bar to give them a monopoly on licensure in the first place. Andrew Jackson said it was a bad idea. He was right. We should return back to those roots. And uh, anything less than institutional change, what Trump doesn't get is this isn't just about him. This is about the dangers of this system given this degree of power, period. You have to take it away from them. You don't solve the problem of show trials by just prohibiting show trials against you. You do it by taking away the power of show trials to exist ever. Let me bring this up. I found, I've, I've been looking for the tweet because I wanted to sh bring it to everyone's attention for a second. I thought it was not there anymore. Listen to this. This is fine. This is still up. No prosecution, no jail time, no nothing. It's still up. Hey, everybody. This is Christina Wong. And uh, I'm coming out. I'm a Trump supporter. And I just want to remind all my fellow Chinese Americans for Trump, people of color for Trump, to vote. Vote for Trump. One day we're going to show this country who's boss. And that's our man, Donald Trump. So don't forget to vote Donald Trump on November 9th. Uh, that's because the election was on November 8th, Robert. Right? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I forget. Okay. Uh, there was a little glitch in there. No, no, that, and that that's still up there. And it was almost like a back and forth joke among trolls on the on the Twitterverse, but. No prosecution for you, uh, Kristen Wong, but uh, jail time for you, Douglas and, Mackey. And, he, and there's no connection between he and the Eastern District of New York. It is ridiculous venue abuse that unless, con you know, it, what they're forcing people to do is people on the right need to indict Barack Obama in a small co conservative county in Alabama and Texas. Then all of a sudden the courts will be like, whoa, hold on, venue abuse. But these hypocritical frauds, and, and that's what you're, you're going to have to do if you're in front of that oral argument. Say, hey, Judge, you okay with that? You okay with us indicting Barack Obama, who helped put you on the bench down in a small county in Texas? Because you just green lighted it. You green light this case, you green light that case. You ready for that? 
You've got to put it to them because they are so used to be, they're so corrupt in their partisan prejudice that they are, and they're so accustomed to abuse of power. They're like the same Supreme Court that arrogantly, condescendingly approved Buck v. Bell for sterilizations in America. That court is an embarrassment to every Supreme Court ever since. Uh, and many of those justices are justices a lot of law professors want to quote and cite. I, I can't forgive them that case. If you were part of that case, uh, you, you, you are one of the most morally horrendous individuals to ever walk the planet Earth, period. And I don't care if you're Brandeis. I don't care who you are. And But, they, but why did they do that? Because they assumed they would just get cheers from the galleys because they were so accustomed to not being challenged directly, confronted directly with who they, they don't like it. They might attack you as the lawyer. They might threaten your own licensure as a lawyer, but ignore that. They need to be, a, a mirror needs to be held up to these people because they have forgot who they are and what they're there for. Um, so Douglas Mackey, they had their oral arguments. I, I think it's, I don't think it sounded like this court was going to overturn the conviction. What do you think is going to happen? And what's the time frame for this? I, I think it goes up to the Supreme Court of the United States. I think the Supreme Court takes it because of the dangerous applications of the statute. And it has additional issues of vagueness and voidness, vagueness and, uh, and venue. Okay. And so you've got three robust constitutional issues and they, they need to step in and start. I mean, part of this is the courts themselves including conservative courts that wanted to ignore law enforcement abuse. Because the same courts that were very concerned if the EPA was exceeding its power turned a blind eye when it was the FBI abusing its power, when it was the Pentagon abusing its power, when it was a uh, U.S. attorney, the Department of Justice abusing their power. And that was a problem. And now it's a, we're reaping the whirlwind uh, for it in such a way that the entire legal system is an embarrassment to anybody with any degree of legal or moral conscience. That's why you see Pete constantly. I mean, Pete, my barometer on this is people like Turley and Dershowitz. They come from Democratic circles. They're aligned with the Democratic side. They tend to be Trump skeptical or critics, uh, didn't vote for Trump in either of the last two elections. They have been condemning this over and over again because they believe in the rule of law. They believe in a robust constitutional protection. They believe in the impartiality and independence of our legal system. And they're seeing it completely eviscerated for politicized partisan purposes. And that's why they're calling it out again and again and again. Uh, but they're not getting anywhere with the courts. Um, now, hopefully this culminates in a very some good Supreme Court rulings this cycle. But it shows where we're at. Uh, and, but, and uh, that, you know, the fact that, we, they, I mean, to, you, 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 that's a good transition into Trump. Everything that's happening to Trump. Is a, is a reflection of this disease, is a manifestation, is a symptom of this, is a, a expression of this virus that is in of partisan prejudice that has infected our entire legal system. And we're going we're gonna to get to Trump in a second, but one question, Robert, even if this gets to the Supreme Court, it's not going to be this cycle. It will be, it'll be no, it'll in 2025. Be All right. Next. And then the last question I had was, nothing on Douglas Mackey, so we'll see where it goes. My prediction is in, people. And by the oh, sounds well, of opponent, Yale Law School now says you have a right to bring a suit for an intentional tort against anyone uh, that interferes with your right to vote. That's interesting. If the court mm. green lights that because they're so obsessed with whacking the right, uh, some of us are going to be using it to sue people like Mark Ellis and, uh, and other people like that. If, if, the, if, the, if the legal system is now open for everybody to play, well, everybody's going to play. And we'll start suing in small counties in rural middle Tennessee that vote 90-10 Trump. And let's see if they then suddenly discover venue is a concern. They then suddenly discover limitations on the law. Yeah, but, but Robert, if, the, if this is the, the new set of rules, it's time to start suing the other side in our favorable venues. Because yeah. that's probably the only thing that's going to stop it. Or they'll just find a way to do the mental gymnastics and say, yeah, but that was good there and it's not good here. Before we yeah, head over to... They don't get to decide that there, right? Yeah, you yeah you, you got to get an elected rural judge in rural Tennessee to rule your way. Good luck with that. So I mean, if, if that's what they're going to green light, then then we have to reciprocate in kind. That's the only option. Christina Wong stopped me from voting in 2016. Um, I wanted to, before we head over to Rumble because we're going to go there now. I just want to do read the uh, some of the chats that we had there. The Rock is uh, a, a, a eoride about money. That's from Freddie. Outdoor Nobles. Keith Oldman was slamming the rock so liberal white women still hold true from piss tears. 
Oh, it was, it was crazy. Karolevsky, stick with the alligators rather than Twitter. Gators have more scruples. Pete Guyat says, Viva, never underestimate the UK politician's self-loathing. It's what led to Brexit. Uh, as Brit who moved to Canada, I'm glad I no longer live there. Canada is not as bad as the UK. It's been great to me. Gray Mare, is there an alternative to services like Westlaw for case law research without having to pay thousands of dollars for subscriptions? Robert, what is There's it? What is it? like Lexus and the rest, but Lexus, almost Nexus. all those databases cost a lot. Now, these days, AI and other aspects make it easier. There's like Case Text. There's Justicia. There's a bunch of online that you can search that you'll often get about 70 to 75 percent of the cases you'd find with legal research databases. I don't know how as this information becomes publicly available, because it's always been interesting. Westlaw and Lexus's source material is not something they have a copyright over. It's uh, the, only, the only thing they have is the algorithmic mean. They've taken the time to digitize these records and find ways to search them uh, relatively easily. It, to the degree that AI and other algorithmic technology can su supplant that, I don't know what how long there's a business for Westlaw and Lexus. We we already have reasonably good alternatives up in Canada with Canly, but uh, you know Google's still or you know search engines are still pretty good, um, but not yeah. Not, you can go, not but there's places like Justia, Case Text. Uh, there's a bunch that are out there that you can actually get a fair amount, and you get a much lower price for 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 the for their subscription part of their service, and a lot of it's publicly available these days. Arkansas crime attorney says, what a moron who thinks she has two brain cells to rub together. YouTube would not let me send game on podcast, a hundred dollar rant. Thank you very much. Remember it's better to bet with Barnes than against great weekend for sports picks followers made LLP dear trolls head over to locals to buy merch. Then troll. Thank you. Chicago faucet. May God protect you. So you are fighting a good fight. The good fight, and you aren't even American. You are doing all the heavy lifting the rest of us either aren't able to do or aren't willing to do. It helps not to have a boss. Does anyone follow Judge Joe in Memphis on Twitter? Viva Fry, he needs to be interviewed. Screen grab. Uh, our court system is getting, uh, I screen grab that. Uh, Arkansas Carpenter, anyone do it? It's getting to the trash. The Supreme needs to step in, set some rights and the wrongs. King of Biltong, good afternoon from Anton's Meat and Eat. Free shipping on your order of Biltong with code VIVA, the V-I-V-A, not W-I-V-A, and BiltongUSA.com. Anton USA, it's, it's delicious stuff. I, I've been eating it daily, actually. Biltong, a perfect pairing of high protein, keto, and carnivore diets. I'm willing to do the same in Arkansas, so Robert, just email me. Uh, I'm willing to help in Tennessee, too. Okay, done. What we're going to do now, hold on, there was something I was supposed to do. Get on over to Rumble, people. Let's do this. Um, that's it. I forgot what I was, I was going to say. It doesn't matter. I'm going to. We're going to end this on YouTube. Come on over to Rumble, and thank you for the blessing, sir. I will take it. Ending on YouTube. The entire stream, I'll post it intact tomorrow on YouTube. But for now, YouTube tomorrow is going to get the leftovers. Tonight, the party's at Rumble. Viva Fry on Rumble. Boom. I'm going to get the Chris. Oh, the Christine Wong has been up there the entire time. I get out of here. Okay. Robert, let's do the Trump, people. I, <sighs> talking about getting despaired. I don't know how bad it has to get, and I don't know how bad it's going to get. Explain to the world what is going on with the bond issue. Bond, Trump secured the bond in the uh, Angeron case. New York nipple judge Angeron, Leticia James, not going to go over all of the corruption there except to say they're both corrupt. Leticia James campaigned off prosecuting Trump. We all know that. New York nipple judge showing his titties to his... Um, what is it called? Alumni group sending out, you know, his articles about how badly he's nailing Eric Trump. Uh, they issue the order 355 million, you know, 450 with, with interest. The court of appeal reduces the bond to 175 million. Trump is able to secure the bond using a bonding agency. I don't know how these things work. Never done it. I'm trying to piece it together. Now, Leticia James is arguing that the surety or the security, the bonding company is not adequate for reasons which I don't fully understand. And what are they asking for now? Uh, they're uh, demanding an investigation into the bond company and now harassment of the bond company. So, I mean, I mean this is what happens when you, when you give a legal system this much power, when you give lawyers this much power, when you give the professional managerial class this much power. They will abuse it. It's, it's just inevitable. It is, it is the inescapable lesson of life. That, you know, the best argument for the Michael Malice style anarchist of the world is the experience of government. The experience of government is the best counterpoint to any argument against the libertarians and the anarchists. 
is seeing what happens when you give a small group of people power. They abuse it without fail. There, there, there's no com- there's no contrary uh, a historical alternative over time. There might be for a short period of time, but not over an extended time period. And that's what the, the Letitia James, who, as you noted, campaigned in one office promising to weaponize the legal system of New York against Trump, did so, did so fraudulently with the help of a partisan uh, hack judge who legally, procedurally wasn't supposed to preside over the case because it should have gone to a different branch of the New York courts, who ignored any appellate ruling that overturned any aspect of his case, that made sure Trump never got a trial by jury, even in very anti-Trump New York, because he knew that he couldn't uh, rely on a jury to rule his way, even if it was all Democrats on the jury, because of what a crock his case was. Uh, the the they, Then in order to try to interfere in the election, James was trying to steal Trump's assets while he appealed, knowing that if the court has a conscience or political IQ over 50, this re- verdict will be completely reversed, or New York is going to become the place you never want to go do business with. New York is going to be known as that banana republic that no businessman wants to get near with their assets or investment, as Kevin O'Leary and others have been very publicly stated. So, uh, And then the Court of Appeals split the baby, reduced the amount of the bond to an amount that Trump's counsel had said they already could post. He posted, and now they don't like the bond. Co- they, they thought they had intimidated all the bond companies into not providing a bond for Trump. Then they go and lie about it at the attorney general's office to the New York Court of Appeals. They get threatened with sanctions, but not actually sanctioned for filing things impermissibly at the New York Court of Appeals and making false statements up there. And now we know, in fact, all along, that was their goal, because as soon as the bond company posts bond, they're threatening the bond company and demanding the same political hack judge somehow revoke that bond. And so I mean, these are people who don't get the message. That's why people like Engron, you, you got to lock them up and put them behind bars. You got to criminally prosecute them. It, it, you know, you, you got to impeach them if you're at the congressional level. Impeachment's not a viable option in New York because the, the whole state is gone. The, the state's politics are just insane. And the court system is complicit in that corruption. And they've made it very clear how complicit they are in that corruption. Now, it's come to the shock of a lot of people who've made the mistake of investing their lives and their fortunes in New York. People like Kevin O'Leary, who, have, who does have major investments in New York, now wishes he didn't, uh, because they, they weren't paying attention. The, 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 the system was good at its corruption because it limited the number of people it targeted. You know, forever, we were taught as lawyers, you go through law school, judges are governed by impartiality, not prejudice. They're governed by reason, that they're, they're these platonic philosopher kings in the Socratic tradition that they're taught in, who simply study what the law is and divine the law from these holy documents, and they apply them to the facts with their incredible means of discernment, of judgment, and that's what we get. That was always a fraud. Jud- judges are human beings. Human beings are motivated, are motivated reason thinkers. In other words, motivation is the master of reason. Reason has never been the master of motivation. That's a lie we tell ourselves to help perpetuate our own survival psychologically. It's the elephant in the brain, as the book so reads, that discusses the science behind this. So that's never been true. I argued with it when I was first semester, first year in law class, law school. And, and, and the professor was like, well, well, we want to be governed by law, not by men, Mr. Barnes. I'm like, who do you think writes the laws? Who do you think interprets the laws? Who do you think applies the laws? Who do you think enforces the laws? The invisible man of the law? Uh, no, it's men. And we have to deal with the reality of that. But this corruption, most people didn't know because 90% of Americans never interact with the legal system in great detail. Their interaction is limited to maybe traffic court which is not usually a boost of confidence when they're in there, but they assume it's just traffic court. They don't realize traffic court is actually one of our better legal systems compared to most of our civil and criminal justice systems. But because 90% of Americans haven't seen it and everybody's getting a crash course. 10 years ago, when I would use the phrase deep state, people would look at me like I'd fall, just come out of the nut house. Now they're like, oh, they don't, I know exactly what you're talking about. The, well, the Robert, true now the legal system, and they're Dick, educating the world by trying to weaponize it against Trump. 
Dick, Dick Painter doesn't, R Richard Painter does not believe there's a deep state, uh, but he did, of course. He is the deep state. <laughs> he is a personification of the deep state. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, what does this investigate the bond company's liquidity? It's an out-of-state bond company. What are the, what are the, like? I don't understand what would have to happen in order for there to be a crisis as it relates to the bond. What has to happen? Like, like what has to happen for that one hundred and seventy-five million dollar bond to be immediately exigible and liquid? The um, well, I mean, the well, uh, ultimately, in order for I mean, it's already been posted. So the idea that it's not secure is is nuts and so but it, it's really it, it's simple it's harassment if you side with trump we're going to harass you that, it, that that's the message we got all these we got a corrupt compliant complicit court system that will eagerly enable you to harass to harass and we got the prosecutors in our pocket we got the lead powerful political decision makers in the pentagon and in the police in our pocket and I'm not talking about the ordinary soldier or the ordinary cop. This is what action films could have. If you followed action films for the last 40 years in America, you could understand what's happened in the Pentagon. You could understand what's happening in the police force. Because every film is about the ordinary honest cop or the ordinary honest soldier trying to do the right thing in some corrupt political weak need hack messing around at the top. And these are and, and those movies do a great job, by the way, of satirizing, you know, the world, the WWE movies and a lot of them brilliant job of satirizing culturally the professional managerial class for their weak need nature for their uh lack of a backbone they're not the people you would ever get into a cockpit with they're not the people you would ever uh you know get if you had to go to war with uh they're, they're, they're the very bottom of the list the very last of the line and yet they're the ones governing us and that's what this is and you see it in these judges making insane and inane gag orders uh, now, credit to Trump. I mean, the the, the beauty of Trump. Well, you he, know, doesn't, I, he doesn't give an F. Is basically yeah, exactly. what he is. He, you cannot bully him. They, they, that that's what I when I went to the first Trump rally in Nevada, Las Vegas, early 2016. Uh, the I realized how everybody had got everything wrong in the media. At the time I was just studying whether to bet on Trump. Uh, I wasn't studying whether to vote for him. I hadn't voted since 19 uh, since the primaries of 96. Because uh, politics was tweedle dumb, tweedle dumber, tweedle dumbest. Uh, you know, I was, I'll skip this. Uh, but the but made a lot of money betting on it. Uh, that, that I was fine with. The but uh, went there and I realized Trump isn't the bully. Trump is the guy who punches the bully in the mouth. That's what the the Trump is the guy that fights back against the bully. And the media kept calling Trump the bully. He's not the bully. He's you media. You're the bully. And the and and in his audience were made of people that had been bullied their whole lives. They weren't people that were bullies. These were the you could see how how nice and kind they were to individuals in the line and in public discussion. These were people that were tired of getting spit on and beat up, and that's what they love about Trump. And what I love about this aspect of Trump is exposing how corrupt. I mean, I've been complaining about the corruption of our political system and our legal system for a quarter century. And I've stayed in the practice of law because sometimes you can win against the odds. Uh, and you, you might as well fight. The only way you're guaranteed to lose is if you quit. Uh, and I've just never found that to be an appropriate approach, quitting in that context. And so the, uh, but the, the, what they don't realize is how bad they look to the world. You know, the, the judge's reaction in New York to being exposed that his family is making money off this pro this rogue criminal prosecution. Just like Fannie Willis, the judge in New York, family is pocketing money off of the prosecution of Trump. That is not just partisan corruption, not just moral corruption. That is literal corruption. <laughs> and, that, and what is the judge's reaction? Not, hey, maybe I should disqualify myself. No. Gang. It's Trump. You better shut up and not tell anybody about it, or I'm going to put you in prison even before we go through trial. And thankfully, Trump is like, "Fine, I've had enough of it. You want to put me in? Put me in. There, I'll be the next Nelson Mandela. I love Nelson Mandela. Put me in. See what that looks like for you. See, because I'm not going to quit talking about you being a corrupt fraud on the American people. And so, credit to Trump for being willing to stand up to the these rogue. It judges these rogue prosecutors, the exposing the weaponized, politicized nature of this process. I just hope he appreciates it's beyond him. 
It's been happening to ordinary people now for a long time. It's got worse over the last uh, 10 years. But it, it the problem is the system itself. We need to take away this power from these people. They're untrustworthy and unreliable with it. Trump in his first term thought he could reform the CIA, reform the Pentagon, reform the NSA, reform the deep state. No, when you dance with the devil, it ain't the devil that changes. The devil changes you. The only way you can do is to conquer the devil and expel him to the regime, to the places where he belongs uh, outside of. And that's where judge this. This is a all these judges, the D.C. judge, the New, the both New York judges. They should be under criminal prosecution because they're the ones interfering in an election. They're the ones violating constitutional rights and liberties, not Trump. Robert, I'm right. I'm just taking a note. I love that when you dance with the devil, the devil doesn't change. And I want to remind everybody, refresh everybody's memory of the details of what's going on. The judge's daughter, that's Judge Juan Marchand. That's his daughter. She works at a think tank, whatever they call these things, a marketing firm, PR firm that represents the likes of Adam Schiff and uh, some Democrat super PACs. She worked with Kamala Harris on her campaign in 2020. They are making money hands over fist. Schiff has raised, I think it's 20 plus million dollars using this prosecution, the one that her father is spearheading right now. And Trump brought it up by linking to that New York Post article and then gets accused of threatening the family and bringing the daughter of the judge into this as though the daughter is an innocent Where civilian. the Mackey thing? That calling exposing corruption threats interference. I mean, I mean, it, it's absurd. But it's like if that's what constitutes a crime, okay, judge, you're committing a crime. Let's see how well you like it when you're on the other side of that dock. And I mean, that that's almost the only thing that's going to get their attention. That's why they go nuts when Mike Davis talks about if I'm Attorney General, we're going to start with a list. You know, the they went nuts when they heard Cash Patel's on the Attorney General list for Trump. Uh, because these are people that are actually going to uphold the Constitution uh, and aren't afraid to utilize their powers. I mean, as it's now turned out, as uh, we talked about, as I talked about in November of 2020, uh, Bill Barr knew about election fraud and was busy covering it up. Nobody wanted to listen to me because they bought into all the nonsense about Barr. Barr goes, he's a deal. I mean, I got a hush hush on Bill Barr. That's how that's how bad Bill Barr is, but great credit because uh, to transition. I mean, well, before we transition into the absurd political weaponization of the prosecutions over two extraordinary, highly ethical, highly professional, highly talented lawyers, Jeffrey Clark and Professor Eastman, who no client has ever complained about ever in their history, who actually honored their oaths, who obeyed their oaths and standing up for election integrity in the election. And now they're trying to defrock and disbar both of them in California and the District of Communism, uh, known as the District of Columbia and false label. The uh, We have these judicial recusals. There's one judge who should have recused himself, the judge in New York, who has a personal profit interest in pursuing the prosecution of Trump, aside from his partisan preju prejudice. But then we have the absurd calls for Judge Cannon to be this qualified, which are legally ludicrous and factually baseless. Now, Robert, I, I tweeted this out as we were live, and I said I meant to do it when I was jogging this afternoon because I had the thought. The Democrats, forget recusal, they're going to try to impeach Judge Cannon. She's a federal judge, so the fact that she's a Florida federal judge wouldn't give her any protection. It, re it relies on Senate and Cong uh, House control, correct? Oh, yeah. They're going to try to impeach her. I'm, I'm, well, I'm their, caught. Their first goal has been to public, you know, Jack Smith has attacked her and attacked the judicial chambers. If I, as a defense lawyer, did that, they kick me out of the case at a minimum, mm -hmm. threaten me with disbarment references or contempt findings or jail. Prosecutors do this and judges are like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> well, I but, said uh, something that offended the, the, the Department of Justice. Well, the, the me ridiculous. The media was saying that Jack Smith had threatened uh, I Aileen Cannon, the judge. No, he, in the, no, he in did. I mean, he, the, the, it was, uh, how dare you challenge me? And I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to appeal you. So what? Yeah, but I'd be like, appeal away. That's right. Uh, but I don't, I don't consider that to be. A th I mean, none of these judges have real courage. Real courage. They have dismissed this nonsense right out of the gate. Uh, but they're enraged that Cannon is pushing back at all. Just a little bit. I mean, that's all she's doing, pushing back a little bit. 
not doing her job, in my opinion. She's just pushing back a little bit, mm -hmm. and they're enraged. And then you have corrupt lawyers like Ty Cobb, this guy who he has all the worst attributes of the real Ty Cobb and none of the best attributes. <laughs> the uh, is uh, this is a guy who represented the president? The president Trump was convinced to hire this schmuck, and and, and this schmuck went and talked to Bob Woodward and disclosed some of the most private confidential information uh, that his client had disclosed to him in an attorney-client relationship so Bob Woodward could put it in a book and the press could write nice, favorable things about Ty Cobb so he could get the next sucker to write him a huge check. That's who Ty Cobb is. I I, I don't know of him winning in any major trial. It's always amazing. Someone say, this so-and-so is a great trial lawyer. It's like, okay, have they ever actually won one? Robert, it's like nine times out of ten they have. Look at this hat. With his little <laughs> fake mustache, trying to pretend he's some big badass. This guy is a joke. He's a fraud. He should be disbarred if we're going to disbar anybody. The uh, But he was out there talking to MSNBC, saying, oh, yeah, the 11th Circuit's definitely going to disqualify him. It is impossible to disqualify a federal judge. I think it should be easier. But it is impossible. The probability she has taken off the case is about 10,000 to 1. So the idea, so the fact that he's out there lying to talk about fraudulent misinformation about the legal system, that's what Ty Cobb is doing. That's what these legal schmucks are doing. This is purely a public intimidation campaign against the judge. Hey, if you don't play ball, we'll get you removed. Uh, really? I mean, I mean, it's preposterous. Ew. What's the ethical basis? In the New York case, you have a guy lining his family's pockets with the prosecution. If they had something like that on, on Canaan, I would say, by golly, she should absolutely disqualify. They're just objecting to her legal rulings. It's ridiculous. And her legal rulings just push back a little bit against this absurd prosecution. They clearly named that guy Ty Cobb after the baseball player, right? The baseball player is like an eight, late yeah, 1800s. Probably had a loser, loser parents, too, because I mean, he's <laughs> that kind of loser. They couldn't even come up with an inventive name. Well, so for I mean, the, the, the uh, you know, the accusations of bias and calls for recusal that I'm fine with, but I'm, I'm Robert, they are going to, they're going to impeach her. I mean, they're, they're going to try to impeach well, her. Well, they may try, but I mean, the, the, it will go nowhere. I mean, there, there's no basis for it. None. Um, and and honestly, so the probability is low. They even try because there they've had no success in the, in the past. Um, the only people they've ever been to, they, they need a personal scandal to get Congress to rally to it. Otherwise, they never get it. So the impeachment power, and do Democrats really want to wake up Republicans about impeaching their rogue well, judges? Yeah, because well, I think- I think are going to be on the, on the Democratic side than on the Republican side that need to be impeached. That depends if the Republicans ever grow the political cojones to do it, because yeah. well, I don't know what would be required to impeach, um, what's his face, New York nipple judge Engelron, but that's a state judge in the state yeah. of New York, so it'll yeah. never no, happen. Right after the state proceedings, different rules in the state proceedings and the federal proceedings. Now, I think both of them, I think all of them, including the federal judge, all these judges that are interfering in the election are violating federal civil rights laws. And they were, in fact, the number one target, even more so than the Klan. The number one target were rogue judges and rogue sheriffs. And the, if you know any of the legal history, 1865 to 1875, when a lot of this letter, legislation went through at the federal level, the biggest, most problematic participants were judges and, uh, and prosecutors and police and sheriffs. They were the ones in bed with the Klan, enabling the Klan to do what they were doing. But it was Klan-style intimidation that was the focal point. Not any of this, we disagree with your speech. We want to call yours. Like, it's my big problem. They say false speech isn't protected. Who gets to decide what's false? Because yeah, they be, it, that that's a power that is too dangerous for anybody to have. It's not, it's and, not and that. you're seeing what happens when you give it to them. F false speech should be protected because, um, not just because of what's false, but rather um, that's the speech that requires the most protection. Robert, okay, so hold on. So we got the um, the well, bond in New York. They're yeah. they're just harassing the company, but thus far nothing. Well, well correct. And the, we'll see if the judge tries to up the ante and jail New, ju Trump in New York. Um, the the judge is that nuts that the what that will do, of course, is just escalate attention on the case, 
and make the Supreme Court probably have to get involved earlier rather than later. But, but where where would they jail? Try he would have to be jailed with his Secret Service. So what what do they do? Like segregate a building but for it, him? It, that's totally un, unclear. Okay. So I mean the the they haven't thought that through at all. It's so and the New York Police Department uh, all loved Trump. So you know it's not like D.C. right where you've got a lot of corrupt people in the D.C. police force and the Capitol Police, and the FBI. New York, they all love Trump. So the so the, you're not going to get the kind of treatment you want to get. But, judge, but you know, the fact that we're even here, and in the same week that this is happening, on uh, from coast to coast, they're trying to disbar Professor Eastman and Jeffrey Clark. All right, and this is the one- supporting Trump. Well, for providing legal theories, which w- at least in um, it's well, Jeff, Jeff Clark's Clark, case, it Jeff wasn't even circulated. He wrote a letter. He wrote a letter <laughs> that was never even sent. It, it was uh, just uh, circulated uh, an internal email. All right, that's now so, this horrible offense. And in California, to try to go after Professor Eastman for his constitutional advice, the same corrupt California State Bar. And I understand I run risk talking about him because I'm licensed in California. But so what? They're corrupt. They, they have covered up for corrupt lawyers repeatedly, covered up for Avenatti, covered up for Girardi, covered up in a case I exposed the lawyer, had a judge rule against the lawyer. They still covered up for that lawyer. They did nothing about the buckalters of the world, a law firm involved in a RICO conspiracy against uh, ordinary everyday, against their own clients. And none of them get hit at all until very late, if ever. And Professor Eastman, who's never had a client complaint ever, who the similar to Jeffrey Clark, even the liberal media said, legal press said, well, you know, they were kind of vague at what rules he violated. Maybe because he didn't violate any. And in, in and that fake judge, the Supreme Court of California decided to conspire with the legislature and the governor to create their own little judicial system outside our California constitutional regular process. So they got these state bar judges who are a disgrace. They're political hacks chosen for partisan reasons going after Eastman, uh, after the documentary record completely disproved any factual claim against him. Uh, basically, I mean, imagine prosecuting, e- this is how Soviet shows trial this nonsense is, prosecuting Eastman for not upholding the Constitution when the reason he's being prosecuted is because he upheld the Constitution. It's an embarrassment. Now, th- there's been misleading press saying that Clark has been disbarred. Eastman has been disbarred. No, these are recommendations. The final decision has to be made by the courts in each one of those jurisdictions, and they have made no such determination. So that is still a work in process. But what what people got to witness in the D.C. case and witness in the Eastman case was, wow, we have a really corrupt legal system. Wow, our state bars are a joke. Our Supreme Court ethics bodies are a joke. It's I mean, I've been arguing with them for 20 years in a range of cases about a range of legal issues. And they the only people they target are politically are, as, as Jerry Spence said, the gentlemen of the bar only care about the gentlemen of the bar. And what he meant was it's class prejudice, political prejudice. They only go after the outsiders. They only go after the dissidents. They don't go after the corrupt. The corrupt are what fuel the system. The corrupt are who run this system. They go after the most innocent who expose the corrupt. And that's what we're seeing in the Clark case. That's what we're seeing in the Eastman case. But it's just at a whole different scale because a whole different legal profession and broader a part of the populace is being educated at how dangerous this is. And again, the real solution, don't allow these people to have this power in the first place. At a minute, if we're not going to take away licensure monopolies, all they do is you give power to a small group of political hacks who hate you to, to ruin your life if you do something they don't like politically. That's why we shouldn't give them that power to begin with. I've been opposed to it from day one. You give small group of people power over someone's occupation, profession, particularly one that impacts constitutional advocacy, you are endangering constitutional liberty. You're not protecting. But putting that aside, at least limit when they can take action, at least limit who decides these cases. Uh, because at least do something, give a right to a jury trial, right? Give, make sure there's always a public trial proceeding. Make, don't have these vague rules that nobody, that they can just selectively determine whatever it means, whatever they want it to mean. And so, uh, I mean, like Wisconsin State Bar had a rule against discrimination 
but it turned out its legal intern program was overt discrimination. So, I mean, I mean, you can't trust these people. These people are unreliable with power. They've no, proven no, no. it. The people who ran fascism were bunch, the professional managerial class just within the top ranks of the police and the military. Doctors and lawyers loved voting for the Nazis. Uh, and the same professional managerial class ran every communist government that's ever existed. Does anybody want to repeat Stalin? Does anybody want to repeat Mao? Does anybody want to repeat the Khmer Rouge? That's what giving them power in Western democracies has done. The European Union, just the professional managerial class writ, writ large. What we're seeing is give them the power of the legal system, control over who can be a lawyer, control over who gets prosecuted, control over who gets sued, and we're seeing what happens. They will misuse and abuse it to take away our constitutional liberties and interfere in an election. So start reducing their power institutionally is the only way to deal with this problem long term. But these are bar complaints, basically, for Eastman and Clark. But that no client has ever filed. Well, who's, the who's the complainant? They're supposed to dismiss as soon as it's done. Adversaries. Political adversaries are the only people that no court has ever complained about Eastman. No court has ever complained about Clark. No lawyer that was dealt, that was part of a proceeding has complained about either one of them. No client has ever complained about them. No witness has ever complained about them. No juror has ever complained about them. The only people that have complained about them are their political adversaries. And Mark Elias, this is all orchestrated by Elias. If you don't doubt that Elias is behind this, just follow his democracy docket. And look at how every day they celebrate and cheer when something bad happens to Eastman or something bad happens to Clark. Then again, Mark Elias is a criminal. He's a money launderer. If you think I'm lying about you, Mark, sue me and I'll prove it in court. You're a money laundering criminal. That's who you and what you are. The, uh, he came after me, by the way. He tried to sick his whole audience into filing bogus ethics complaints against me for exposing the criminal that he is. So, uh, the you know, been there, done that. Good luck. Next time, get in line, buying all the three-letter agencies that, that uh, would like to see me check out early. Not going to happen. The, but this is an embarrassment of the legal system. This is an embarrassment to the rule of law. This is an embarrassment to the United States of America. And credit in this respect to uh, Robert Kennedy. So Robert Kennedy, to be honest, had been kind of a wuss for a little while on January 6th. And I get it. Uh, you know, it's not his political side of the aisle. And he hadn't stood up and said anything about it. And But the beauty of Robert Kennedy is if you challenge him on something and give him the research, he'll actually research it and change his mind. That You almost never see that about any politician these days. I've, I've personally experienced it in representing him and working with him uh, and working for him, all of the above. And he came out this week saying we need to look into what hap what's happening on January 6th. This looks like political weaponization of the legal system. The special counsel needs to be assigned to investigate everything that happened here. Credit to him on that. Donald Trump might be able to learn that lesson occasionally too. But our legal system is uh, deeply fraudulent and it's being exposed as deeply fraudulent. And we need to start looking at institutional remedy and relief because these philo philosopher kings have become nitwit tyrants. Uh, and complicit in the other behavior of other nitwit tyrants. And we're, we're witnessing the horror of it a live time. Uh, procedural questions on Eastman and Clark. Um, East, no, it was Clark who had the judge, uh, had the court, I don't know what it is, the tribunal, basically say uh, he's in, he, he, should be, he should be disbarred, but he's not for the time being. And they, they can't. Oh, they're, they're, so the state bar judge is simply in an advisory role, not a decision-making role in California. The State Bar Disciplinary Council uh, or committee is also in D.C., Jeffrey Clark, only in advisory role. They don't make decisions. So this is the part of the, where they give due process. They allow them to present all their evidence in a full process. Then they make a recommendation. But in, in, in uh, California, it then goes up to the appeals portion of the State Bar Court the, their determination just decides whether the California Supreme Court even deals with it. If they say we recommend disbarment or any other penalty, it still has to go to the Supreme Court. Only the Supreme, there's this myth out there. Every now and then I'll get somebody say, Barnes, why don't you admit you're part of the British Accreditation Registry? Isn't that what the bar means, Barnes? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, the, the, the bar is simply an organization or what is commonly colloquially called the bar is really the court of each state. That's who licensed lawyers, court of each state. And in a federal case, 
It's the local federal district court. They license you. It's always the judges that license you. Now, those judges often delegate prosecutorial power uh, and uh, uh, kind of adjudicative, but not final adjudicative power to these other uh, bodies, sometimes called a state bar. Sometimes the state bar has power in a state. Sometimes there's no power in a state. Depends on the state. Uh, so the, the and sometimes the board of professional responsibility or something called something like that in different states. And the state bar is a whole different entity, has nothing to do with licensing lawyers. Um, but, and that gets the public confused. And quite frankly, I think it's because courts don't want people honestly fully aware that they are controlling who can appear before those courts. I have long opposed it. It makes no sense whatsoever for the courts to have this power. Even if we're not going to strip them of their power, even if we're not going to have institutional reform about how they make these kind of decisions in terms of clarity of rules and clarity of proceedings and different decision makers at, diff at both the prosecutorial and adjudicative side, at a minimum, they should not have this power to begin with. Why does the judicial branch get to write the rules, in other words, be the legislative branch, enforce the rules, in other words, be the executive branch, and then get to adjudicate whether their rules and their interpretation of the rules and their enforcement of the rules is constitutional. And not only that, think about who this is going to apply to. When judges control who can appear before the, their courts and advocate on behalf of people and, and exercise their professional and occupational obligations and duties, do you think a lawyer is going to be inspired to say the judges are corrupt, to say the judges are political hacks, to say the judges should be impeached or imprisoned? Uh, very few. Because when you are, I mean, when I've been critical of judges, I've had the opposing counsel want the judges to threaten me for it. Uh, repeatedly happened in the Pfizer case uh, for Brooke Jackson. They repeatedly wanted the judge to threaten me uh, for anything I said critical of how the legal system was operated. They because, and that's a corruption in our system. Judges should not have the power to write the, to be the legislature, be the executive, and be the judiciary. And they definitely should not have the power to decide who gets the opportunity to expose them. That is a dangerous power to have in their hands, aside from the breach of separation of powers. What What is the time frame for Clark and um, Eastman? Like, wh wh when are they going to have a, de a definitive? Go, it'll go probably at least another 12 to 18 months. Mother effort. And how I, I just shared the give, send, go. You can, yeah, there's a give, send, go for Jeffrey Clark. Uh, I, I think Eastman has raised money in his own way. Um, the uh, but I, I you know I've constantly and continuously boosted fundraising for Clark because th these guys are not your they're not Candace Owens who's going to make up a political controversy and then beg for money. God bless Candace. But it's like here, like if if somebody wants me to take the Candace Owens of the world seriously, let me see her promote the Jeffrey Clarks of the world. Right? She could use her platform to promote causes that actually need money, that aren't multimillionaires like she is. Uh, you know, the this is, you know, I, that's why I take a lot of what she says and does with a grain of salt. Now, some people are being critical of her and then favoring Ben Shapiro. And I'm like, I'm supposed to favor a guy who calls for a war every six seconds? I don't think so. But the at the same time, you know, Jeffrey Clark, the cause of Jeffrey Clark is a real cause with real consequence. For a good, uh, who was the only official in the entire Justice Department to try to stand up for election integrity and do his job and uphold his oath. And that's what they're prosecuting him for. That's what they've already effectively barred him from his employment for. That's what they've already defamed him and destroyed his reputation for. That's what they subjected him to rogue criminal prosecution for in multiple jurisdictions. And now they're doing the same thing to Eastman. Those are cases we should be supporting and engaged in. The uh, I try to be very selective at which cases I promote, because so that it's only the most compelling cases that are out there, whether it's Amos Miller or Brooke Jackson or vaccine mandates or cases like that, or election integrity cases that are underfunded. Candace is just fine. She doesn't need another check. God bless her. So the uh, but Jeffrey Clark is you can still find his give send go still important to contribute because they're waging war on him so that no Justice Department official ever does their job again in an election contest, that they go along with the corrupt acts like Bill Barr, who belonged in prison from the time he's been a lawyer. I mean, that man has been committing crimes as soon as he got a bar, got a, got his little uh, uh, certificate of uh, licensure. Uh, just go back to what he was doing as a CIA lawyer for Poppy Bush in the mid-70s. 
Uh, and see, it, was that around the time the MK Ultra files disappeared? That they just luckily some idiot staffed them in the wrong, kept copies in the wrong place. That's the only reason why we have any MK Ultra files because Barr thought they were all destroyed. Uh, I, I'm I gotta find Barr saying I I there's no evidence of widespread voter fraud, and he said it one week into the right, allegations. He, he put it all on trial. He's like, all right, so you people are going to try to do this show trial against me on bogus grounds because I did my job. I'm going to let evidence come out to the world that has been hidden until now about how Bill Barr was corrupt, about how Bill Barr was covering up election fraud, how Bill Barr was ordering people, ordering prosecutors on the phone. You will shut down that investigation. After evidence came to them proving of election fraud, he was demanding you better shut it down and shut it down now. And Jeffrey Clark was one of the few people to expose it. And that's why he's being targeted. That's why the whole system is weaponized against him. And so the uh, and I do hope to see a little more of Trump supporting their cases because it, it's not just Trump being targeted, though. Trump sometimes thinks so. It's the it's the power this is that's so pernicious that if you simply challenge deep state authority or corruption anywhere in our government, they try to crush you, especially if you're an effective advocate for those people. So, I mean, then you always get targeted. I've lived it for a quarter century. So the we got to rally to the Jeffrey Clarks of the world so this nonsense doesn't happen again. And then next, we need we need institutional reform so these people don't have this power. You can't give it to them. They will misuse it. They will abuse it. They've proven it to the world. <clears throat> well, Robert, <laughs> I would say people need a white pill or they're going to get thoroughly black pilled. I'll share the link again. I've, I've sent out Jeff Clark's Give Sand Goats. So we're going to share that around. What is next? This segued perfectly into something, but I forgot where I was going with it. Well, we've got uh, juvenile court immunity. Some political hacks that finally were exposed. Uh, on the white pill side, we got the absurdity of what's happening in the Amos Miller case. Uh, we got the whistleblower suing CIA Congressman Goldman. He says he's from New York, but it should say D. Langley uh, behind his name. That's who he represents, Langley, Virginia. The uh, uh, We got what's happening to victims of discrimination and vaccine mandate cases by judicial abuse. Uh, we got election law reforms that this is, a, this is a white pill. We got plenty of white pills. Hold hey, on. Man, we all the people coming together to fight back for Amos Miller is translating into the best legal defense for food freedom that's been raised in our modern American history. Uh, the the uh, we, we got great a good ruling on holding the corruption of our juvenile court and family court system accountable. We got a great win of, by, on behalf of the people of Wisconsin, oh! Adjurland against Zuckbucks. Well, before we get to the white pills, Robert, let's let's stick with some of the let's stick with some of the black pills. Okay. I Dude, tried you want to... us to be the honorary alligator coming up to steal the <laughs> biggest fish he's ever caught. No, no, I want I, I, we can get it up onto the top. And then let's get the let's get all the bad news out of the way before we get to the good news. Robert, the New York uh a 17 and a half million dollar settlement for religious discrimination because women wearing uh, Muslim women wearing the religious garbs were forced to take it off for mugshots. Set aside, I, I tried to find this before we got live tonight. I couldn't find the details. I, I, I would like to know why the women were being arrested. Not that it would change how I think they should be treated. I'm just curious. I was trying to figure out or find in any articles if they were forced to remove head scarves or kneecaps. And the difference being, I could I could understand an exemption or you know an accommodation for one, but not for the other. So first of all, do, do you know why they were being arrested? It doesn't make a difference. Okay, I did, the story didn't get into that aspect. Okay, and, and I and I fished around. I could only find two articles that actually use the word kneecap to describe some of the examples. Kneecap is the ones where all you see is the eye. I, I look, I, it's not my cup of tea for whatever I would uh, you know tolerate you know, by way of religious garb. The Iraqi, I know I was in a real Iraqi restaurant because they had every they were eating underneath it, and they had everything. And the weirdest thing in London was like all these people that were dressed up like this going in for shopping for clothes, and I was like. <laughs> Well, is that only for at home or looking in the mirror? Uh, I'm not sure I get the logic. Though I knew I was like, okay, I'm getting real Iraqi food and everybody looks like that. Of course, the second thought that comes to your mind is, okay, I better get out of here in case somebody comes in tick 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 tock. But the uh no, or, or 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 you know, or they don't like the fact that maybe I don't know who you're with, but not, you know, not necessarily oh, by myself, thankfully. It, 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 oh, I could have been in some trouble. <laughs> the uh they, they, you know, thought I was tied to the crusades. Uh the crusades might have been justified, by the way, but that's another story. That's that's a hush hush. I 
this is this is re- you know when you say i took for granted certain historical facts and then you understand the history of the crusades uh that was one of my you know going back and reassessing something that i took for granted as a matter of fact that might have been 180 degrees inversed but so it's a 17 and a half million dollar settlement because um, Muslim women were forced to remove their head garbs for mug shots for the purposes. Re- yeah, and they said it was a religious. I agree with this suit in that unless it's necessary for police identification, and their point was the degree to which they were requiring removal of these clothing did not that they could do it enough to necess- to get identification, but not to the degree they were doing it. And so it also recognized, you know, Sikh with beards, uh, Jewish caps, a uh, range of other religious uh, headwear that people have. Uh, but what I found ironic is it's the same New York City that refuses to recognize religious exceptions to vaccine mandates. And it's the, like the, 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 the same logic here. It was, it's somehow privacy and religious expression only matter when you want an abortion. We'll be getting to that case in a second. Or when you're a Muslim or a religious minority. But it doesn't apply if you don't want a vaccine mandate. I just I need to highlight what I believe to be the absurdity because I, Robert, I, I I had the same thought process you had. If they say, "Hey Jew, take off your skull cap," it's a kippa. Take off your kippa for a monk shot. I was like, "Okay, well, how's what that relevant?" Kippa, a kippa, a kippa, or as my uh, LCC oh, high that's school my favorite teacher. memes is the one that has Nick Fuentes dressed up as a crazy Muslim, and uh, me and dressed, you dressed up me as an Orthodox <laughs> Jew. Uh, that was like, ah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. No, but like the, the, take off a keepa for a monk shot. I was like, okay, take off a scarf where your whole face is exposed. Fine. It actually was. Oh no, it was not the kneecap. It was the hijab. The hijab does not cover the face. The kneecap does, but apparently it involved the kneecap as well. That's where you only have the eye slot. And religious beliefs aside, this debate happened up in Canada, where they said when you swear, when you become a citizen, take off your headscarf, uh, your religious garb, and. You know, do what whatever say whatever it is that you have to say when you become a citizen. And it was a litmus test between conservatives and liberal. As a policy question, like I know what I believe. As a safety issue, you need to know who you're arresting. Taking off a kippa is different than taking off anything that blocks a meaningful portion of your face. And from what I understand, this included that. But they settled for 17 half million. Robert, my issue with this, this sounds a little bit more like the Fox News Dominion money laundering. You have a a, a partisan. Uh, uh, ideologically motivated uh, judicial system in New York. You've got a partisan, ideologically motivated plaintiff, and they're just basically saying, here's $17 million. We'll take it from tax dollars. How is this not taxpayer money laundering for political purposes? Yeah, the, the, yeah there's a ton of that. They, because they're in on it. In other words, that when they're not really defending the cases, that they're eager to settle the cases to write checks for their favorite political causes. And you sue me and we pretend we're suing, we're, we're fighting each other. And actually we just take the public's money and give it back to one another. Uh, there, uh, Biden, I mean, the Obama administration mastered this, mastered this, bringing bogus cases that were solely designed to redistribute money from leftist, from, from public taxpayers controlled by leftist governments to other leftist NGOs. It was just redistribution disguised uh, by uh, uh, by lawsuits. This, I mean, that's how they did the 2020 election. It just wasn't money. It was power they shifted. Okay, I'll sue you. We'll pretend we're adverse and we'll rewrite the election rules in violation of the Constitution and uh, make sure that Trump loses. I mean, that's what's coming out. I, I, Trump obviously hasn't put all this together yet, but what's coming out from the various FOIA reports and other places is that the people orchestrating the pandemic in his own administration, were, or using it as a pretext to do mass mail-in voting before the pandemic was even announced as a pandemic. They were planning it in January and early February. That, that, that was a conspiracy. Against, the plot against the election really began all the way in 2016, but it started to take off and take a new life in 2020 using the pandemic as the guise. And they, they, they always use something as a disguise mm-hmm. to shift power around. Uh, and that that's what's going on here. All right. Well, I, th- I think it's I think it's total bullshit, and it does smell like money laundering uh, to me. But w- w- what do I, I know? I'm it. just a lot. I know, I'm a deeply cynical. Barack Obama. Now I gotta go, and I gotta go back and reassess what I took for granted as fact twenty years ago, fifty years ago, a hundred years ago, and it never ends. The one here, I guess we're going to go. We're going to start getting into the white pills. DEI might have died. We'll see. 
Robert, Wisconsin bar no longer <laughs> limit diversity internship to racial minorities, LGBT applicants as part of legal settlement, that these things need to be taken to court. Below, uh, to quote Adam Sandler out of They're All Gonna Laugh at You, it blows my freaking mind. They were offering scholarships based on diversity that was all immutable political bullshit. Uh, LGBTQ2IA+, whatever the hell, black, Latino, you know, minority, fine. Every diversity except for ideological or intellectual diversity, and it had to get sued. They're offering scholarships basically saying white boys need not apply, and that DEI... Straight. Straight white Christian men. I'll say, I'll, I'll yeah, say that, it. Uh, yeah, I'm about to bring a suit for uh, against Red Hat and IBM for a guy who checked all the boxes. It was just the wrong boxes. Oh, he's white. Oh, he's a man. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you this. Religious. I, oh, I, man. He, he, he's straight. He's married. And then they not only discriminated against him, they discriminated against him in a way that was meant to cause him maximum harm. I mean, denied him. And, and I'm going to be co-counsel in that case with America First Legal, Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller is the one who helped bring this case. They're doing great work. I mean, just like Judicial Watch, America First Legal, another organization doing really good work. Uh, along with 1776 Law Center uh, that uh, that I helped start. Uh, and the goal is to make sure we get attention. And it's thanks to Miller's brought a bunch of these cases and keeps winning. Uh, and the, you know, you know, that State Bar takes money from me, Wisconsin. State Bar Wisconsin takes money from me. And they were helping to fund this nonsense. Uh, and they weren't telling everybody they were doing this nonsense either, where they, you can have an internship as long as you were not somebody that looked like or sounded like or believed like our founding fathers. By the way, they hate the Amish so much. You know, I mean, it's, it's, they check all the wrong boxes for the uh, diversity, equity, inclusion crowd. I, I'm just trying to look for the part of the, um, the suit where it says, we're going to change the definition of diversity. We don't know how yet. Robert, but, um, it, it's such bullshit. I, when, when I was a lawyer in Quebec, they asked, you know, what eth you know any anything that you can attach to your ethnicity minority and like did they ask well, if you were a two spirit that was my favorite well, well, one. California <laughs> now has eighty seven different boxes you can check eighty seven well, different boxes it's like Bruce I've, Springsteen you know he's at fifty seven channels and nothing on of course now he got like six thousand channels and nothing <laughs> on but the you got eighty seven boxes and then there's like two spirit Indian or something. I was like, I don't even know what the heck that is. Well, Two Spirit is, is the native version of Bi, I guess. Like, you know, they, they felt both ways. But like, something I, tells I, me the old Comanches uh, were, were, were running around as Two Spirits. Uh, just, I, I, you know, it depends busy, how much, uh, you know, devouring their opposition quite literally. Well, I don't think they were worried about that. I would say it depends on how much ayahuasca you might have had because you could discover a lot of things about yourself. Bottom line, though, it's a load of shit. They're going to redefine diversity or they're going to redefine it in a legally acceptable manner. How about just ideological? I mean, not even, is it is it intellectual diversity? It, diversity of thought, not diversity of anything else. So good news coming out of Wisconsin. That's a bit of a white pill. Uh, I, I don't know. White pill well, might and, be and, racist. Well, well, later. Wisconsin, finally, Zuck Bucks ended in Wisconsin. So what, what happened here? I, I, I know nothing of this. So the, the reference to Zuck Bucks is Mark uh, Zuckerberg, founder and owner, lead owner, lead shareholder of Facebook, and uh, you know now called Meta, whatever the heck that. I means. know, I know who Zuck. I think anybody who doesn't know who Zuckerberg is is living in a freaking cave. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, there's the great <laughs> meme of that lady who freaked out on a plane. Uh, you know, said something. You know, that, what's going on back there? Something's wrong. You know, da da da. Uh, that mother well, effer ain't real. The, the popular meme is always it's a picture of Mark Zuckerberg that she was looking at. Uh, that, you know, that dude looks like an alien. I mean, proof of alien life, the uh, or robots being real. The but uh, he basically helped steal the 2020 election, the election fornication that took place. A lot of it. I mean, you it was an orgy. Look at that guy. Total I, but I, I think this, I don't know if this picture is real. <laughs> I don't have to go look at that. No, it, it is. Man. You see that guy? That dude is a freak. That total, total freak. The, the, the uh, <sighs> But so he spent hundreds of millions of dollars buying off election offices all across the country to make sure they did the Democratic Party uh, and Biden's bidding uh, with you know laundering and littering the countryside with mail-in ballots that uh, were going to flood the system in ways that would make sure that they magically cast their ballots for Biden. 
And a big part of it was money. This is how the feds buy off the local police, for example. They, they threaten them with lawsuits on civil rights grounds if they don't do their business or in a, a criminal investigation into corruption, quote unquote, keep it in quotes because that's where it belongs. The, uh, or, but the other thing you do, that's the, that's the stick. The carrot is they say, hey, we have this money. Like we talked about last week, the, the red, uh, you know, red flag system that they were going to use and they're making local sheriff's offices complicit in it. You want some money for Officer George? You better do our bid, our bidding, our business. Well, it's the same dynamic Zuckerberg did. Said, "Hey, a hey, little election officer, you want you, you want some money to have an extra staff member on to be able to cover some overtime? Uh, okay, just imp implement my rules, not the legislature's rules for the election in violation of the Constitution." So many states had banned it. In Wisconsin, they made sure to get it on the ballot to ban it permanently. And they did. They're like, no, our election commission, I let no more taking money from anybody other than out of the taxpayer drawer so that you're doing our bidding, not somebody's private bidding. So Zuckbox is pretty much dead in all the key swing states across the country. And Wisconsin just helped put another nail in that coffin uh, for 2024. But no, there's no retroactive consequences to any of this. Yeah, of course not. No, no. I mean... If you know someone could in 2025, they took office uh, because some of the statute of limitations uh, don't go until for six years. Wait, ta ta but, going, you know, circling back to the Douglas Mackey disenfranchising people of their right to vote. This sounds like this could be, you know, in that ballpark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was illegal campaign contributions. It was violated a bunch of laws what Zuckerberg was doing. All right, I'm, I'm trying to pull up the email with the list in it, Robert. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I shut well, it down the, for goodness well, sake. Multiple other white pills, but before we get to those, you know, in the connection to the hijab case, what else is uh, religious? It turns out the same Indiana courts that have a hard time recognizing religious right to object to a vaccine mandate say you do have a religious right to have an abortion. Oh, it's called methiprazone. Is it, this oh, is this oh, is not that's the, no, that's, that's the next one next case at the okay. Supreme Court. This is the Indiana so, State case. Um, what's the? I mean, I don't want to ask an obvious question. What religion are they a party of that would uh, have it as a requirement? Is it Satanism or is well, it bastardizing Christianity? Uh, yeah, they call it. It's Jews for abortion. Oh <laughs> shit balls! It was something like that. The. Uh, 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 was their name? That, that was one of the groups, and then oh. there was other religious groups. But the the group. problem is, this, uh, like, I, I'm they not were trying a, to make it sound like this group that somehow pro life laws are anti Semitic, <laughs> and it's like, oh, whoa, I don't, I don't think so. But uh, I, I agree with part of the court's logic. They said your right to a medical procedure, your right not to do a medical procedure, can be part of your religious tradition. I agree, and under the, the state's version of the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, that can limit the government. What I disagree with is they said the state can have no cognizable interest in in uh, human life prior to birth, even though the Indiana Supreme this was the Indiana Court of Appeals that said this. The Indiana Supreme Court has already ruled there is a compelling state interest in life from the moment of conception, and they just decide they're just going to disobey the Indiana Supreme Court because that's how out of what is this? This is the professional managerial class enraged at allowing ordinary people to have a say on anything, anything. And they control that the biggest power they have is in the bureaucracy of government and in the judicial branch and the legal and medical professions in general. And what they do is they, they are enraged that the Supreme Court allowed ordinary people to make up their own mind through their own legislative processes, what laws on abortion they wanted. They're like, no, 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 we, the professional managerial class should decide. So they, the same people that have said you somehow can't have, now the same court said, well, other courts have said you can have a religious objection to a vaccine mandate. Yeah, but you Indiana court said you couldn't back when this issue was being challenged at the time in 2020. Some of us remember you bunch of frauds. But uh, so I agree with the, you can have a, absolutely a religious objection to a medical procedure and even a right to a medical procedure. They're ignoring, that aspect is less than clear. There's a big difference between the right to refuse a medical procedure and the right to a medical procedure. They ignore that distinction. But the biggest one they do is they say absolutely no state compelling interest of any kind 
in any human life prior to birth. That I don't agree with at all. Robert, I have to pull this up just because there's some funny, uh, uh, funny in a very sick way um, that it's Hoosier Jews. Hoosier Jews of choice. Who's your, who's your Jews for choice? Okay, but Robert, the, the articles the, they're framing it as uh, the restrictions if the if the health of the pregnant woman is compromised. I, oh, I don't, uh, yeah, the, that's under the law. So the law that Indiana passed, it, because and here's what they they use that against Indiana. They said so you passed a law saying you can still get an abortion if the woman's life is in danger, if it was the product of rape or incest, so on and so forth. Because you did that, we're going to say that that means any limitation on the law is not narrowly tailored. Okay, that's a pro- yeah, that's so, the pro- and, and that's where it's like there there were some places they could go that I would agree with legally, but I was like, how are they going to one? I was like, how are they going to deal with? There's a difference between the right to refuse something and the right to something. They just pretend that difference doesn't exist. And I was like, how are they going to deal with? the state's interest in this, that the Indiana Supreme Court that they're governed by has already ruled on 50 years ago. Well, they just pretend that ruling doesn't matter. Like, ah, times have changed. We're going to ignore that president. And it's like, ah, okay. But it also shows the selectivity. One minute they're finding robust religious freedom rights, if it means a hijab at a mug at a mug shot, or if it means an abortion, but somebody that wants to not have to force vaccinate their child but doesn't have any religious objection in many of these same states like new york uh when it comes to a vaccine mandate so the uh, hypocrisy uh, it just shows how partisan all this is and They're not to at the end result wanting and the reverse engineering it even if it means contradicting themselves in other rulings not and not to i i i'll, I'll get canceled not to point it out I, judge Le- liana wiseman author of the 70 page finding finding the plaintiffs had standing to pursue the case and these uh, are the wh- same wh- judges that will find no standing when you sue on a vaccine mandate grounds oh lordy uh in the hoosiers for the hoosier jews for abortion <laughs> um yeah you would have thought that was started by an anti-semitic <laughs> troll group <laughs> it doesn't matter I guess it's a real organization Robert, uh, that's the um, that's one of the cases. Now the other one, bringing it back to the methipris- methiprisome, I forget what state of court we're up to on this one. Is this Supreme it, or is the this- Supreme Court? They just held oral argument. Okay, fine. So now this is the this is whether or not they can ban. Oh, this and this is one where I think it's not going to go anywhere good. It sounded like all the judges were hostile to overriding the FDA's the approval. I mean, there there Alito was great. But many of the others were on the wrong side. We've been talking about this one for a long time, and I could put it all together in retrospect when you talked about it. What this is a question of whether or not the FDA basically bypassed rules, regulations, a procedure to approve methiprazone. This is called the abortion pill, or am I mixing up two things? No, no, that's correct. And so they, they, you take this pill, and it causes you to have an abortion. And then the question is, it was at the one point off label use, if I'm not mistaken. And then the question Isn't was, what amazing? I- the, the, the uh, ivermectin, you couldn't use, couldn't prescribe. Safest so drug on earth. License, if you did prescribe for COVID, uh, would be smeared and shamed if you talked about. But abortion pills, woo, that's great for you. No well, problem. And, and, that's what FDA is. Off, off, so it was the off-label. There's a bunch of $1 super chats that just came out. I'll get that in a second. So it was off-label use of this drug. And they say, oh, look, and look at it. it, it it's a pill you take, and it causes you to abort a fetus. And they say off-label, we want to approve it, and we're going to surveil this. FDA looks at the data for four years and says, safe and effective, 0.3% hospitalization you know rate. how good that label is whenever they uh, say safe and effective. Well, but, but, now, but now I'm looking back like I, I don't I, – like, I, I have never had experience with this, but I, I – the, the meth, methiprazone and the morning after pill, are those the same thing? No, different. Okay. So I, I don't know enough about these things, but bottom line, methipers you know, this relates to like RU486 and all of that okay. stuff. And so this is it's it's it, it was determined to be effect, uh, effective. I don't know about safe. We'll get there in a second. When in fact the data contradicted them. And so we've talked about this a number of times, how the how the FDA bypassed yeah. a number of look at the Pfizer, the Pfizer pe- pe- the, the COVID pill. Remember the pill that treated it? Their vaccine supposed to give you immunity. Wasn't safe, wasn't effective, wasn't a vaccine, didn't prevent COVID-19. And then they had a had a pill to help treat your COVID-19 
once you got the COVID-19 after you got the vaccine that's supposed to prevent you from getting it from Pfizer. Turned out it was completely ineffective and they knew it. They stole hundreds of billions of dollars more from the American people and people around the world. That's, and that's another one the FDA was like, woohoo, green light. So and the FDA green lights it. The question then is who, I mean, I, I understand the arguments here because what the, the, the plaintiff or the plaintiffs are not doctors. They're not, I don't know, they're not injured people. They're basically saying FDA bypassed, circumvented the rules, the requirements to approve a drug. It should not have been approved and it should be outlawed. Where I'm, where I, and by, I, this is setting aside all of my beliefs on abortion, which would probably piss off both the left and the right. My issue with this is setting all that aside. If everybody knows about whether or not it's dangerous, not dangerous, effective, what it can do to you, and decides to take it, uh, I do question who has the right to say no. This should not be available to people. Oh, what is? It? I, I disagree with FDA being able to control anything. So the. The one aspect I agree with challenging is whether the FDA can label something safe and effective when it's not safe or neither safe nor effective. And that to me was the part of the suit that had the strongest roots that the district court recognized, okay, you did this in violation of the Administrative Procedures Act. You did so in violation of your own rules. You did so in contravention of this direct information. And the argument that's been used by the gut for the FDA is nobody can sue us. The same argument they've used against us, Children's Health Defense, in our case, challenging their ability to force this on soldiers and then to force this on children. Both cases, the court said, no, nah, you can't sue because the FDA said nobody can sue us. So here's where conservatives have been so badly mistaken on standing. And this is where Thomas is wrong. This is where uh, Kavanaugh is wrong. This is where Gorsuch might end up wrong. All the conservatives have convinced themselves that if they just drastically expanded standing to drastically reduce access to the courtroom, that all the liberal cases will go away. But of course, what happens is liberal courts ignore that. So all they're actually doing is helping liberal courts get rid of conservative cases because they can't think two steps ahead based on a doctrine that, by the way, is invented in the first place. Sorry, Justice Thomas, you're not being an originalist. Uh, if I'm ever in front of the Supreme Court on this, I I'm going to say it, by golly. I'm going to say, the, say, oh, you know, the Your Honor, I kept trying to find the word standing in the Constitution. It doesn't seem to be there. Seems to be some judges stuck it in there. In fact, they didn't stick it in there until the 1920s. It didn't exist for over a century and a half of American legal history. But they're going to use standing to allow the abortion pill to continue to be distributed falsely is safe and effective in violation of the Administrative Procedures Act. That's my problem with it. Well, and and because my Kavanaugh is going to ca capitulate. Barrett's going to capitulate. Even Thomas in a misguided and Gorsuch in misguided efforts to hurt liberals are only going to hurt themselves and cover up state corruption. Alito, Robin, to his credit, pointed out, he goes, if you're right, that means nobody can sue the FDA. Well, is I, that I, what I, you're saying? No, but right I, question, I, right path. I, We'll see if the Supreme Court has the right answer. They probably won't. But but an injured person has standing. Well, it'd be, uh, theoretically, but they're saying these people aren't injured. So here you had doctors forced to do procedures. They're only forced to do because th this pill is labeled as safe and effective. They're like, oh, that's not good enough. And then what about the organizations that had to spend money to correct the misinformation the FDA put out there? Oh, not, not good enough. Because the conservatives are secretly cheering. They're saying, wow, we're going to stop the liberals from being able to sue. No, you're just going to stop yourselves, you morons, while doing so on no constitutional basis. That's what they're doing. They think they're so smart. I mean, we have so many clerks, conservative law clerks, that are, the, they, that are your classic disconnected political nerds that think they know, oh, yeah, we're going to really get them this time, you nitwits. You're well, gutting yourself. That's what you're doing. Uh, then my only, my only, my only not pushback. My only observation would be, in theory, there should be some actual victims. I mean, deaths and severe adverse events after the use of mefiprazone as an a, a, a board of what the fuck? Sorry, oh, I don't so even. The problem is, if you're an actual victim, you have no grounds to sue the government because there's immunity. So you have to be at imminent risk of injury under their interpretation. This and is yes. So you can't sue if you've already suffered the injury. But until you suffer the injury, you can't sue either. Ha, ha, ha. Aren't we smart? Robert, I, I, what I'm, does the Constitution say? Article 3. It says cases or controversies. How is this not a case? How is this not a controversy? 
Let's let Article 3 I, read in the plain words. I, Justice I, Thomas is putting words in there that ain't in there. I Justice totally Gorsuch agree. is putting words in there that ain't in there. I totally agree with you on all of that. And there's no but. I'm just wondering why someone who has not actually died because or been injured. Prove. Because you've already suffered injury and there's monetary immunity. You can only sue for injunctive or declaratory relief. And Mother if you've already suffered the injury, then well, then then there's there's nothing to prevent. See, so someone's got to tell me sue to prevent an injury under their interpretation. But by that definition, you can't sue until you're injured. But because you can only sue to prevent injury, you can never sue. Well, I'm just going to share that out there. And if if I'm misreading that, because I'm I'm going to keep that window open and see those numbers seem astronomical. All right, what do we got next, Robert? Uh. No, we, we still got some insane cases. We got the, you know, speaking of FDA, USDA, we got the PDA, the mini-me of the FDA, with some extraordinary announcements in their effort to try to take away Amos Miller's right to oh, operate. Oh, PDA's Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. Let's do it. Go Sounds for it. Sounds like pedo, but that's just coincidental. <laughs> I was thinking animals, but I was thinking pedo. But all right, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, what's the latest really on animals? really love animals if you watch the <laughs> South Park episode. Hey, you know What's what? It? Wasn't that about P. Diddy? <laughs> I think that South Park episode was about P. Diddy. I think South Park is going to become like uh, uh, so The Simpsons. Well, The Simpsons predicted a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah. thus far, on a more, uh, what is statistically less probable, South Park has been very good. What's the PDA doing to Amos Miller, Robert? So the court, uh, you know, uh, ruled in our favor, saying that, in fact, there is no basis uh, the, to prevent him from doing things outside the state of Pennsylvania. Limited the injunction to within the state. The, the state went nuts. They filed emergency motions with the court demanding that the court change its mind and reverse itself and said, yeah, that, that this is just horrendous. Amos Miller can now sell food outside the state. People can now get it. Amos Miller's food, as long as they live outside the state, this can't happen, Judge. You have to prohibit this. And what's extraordinary is they let out of the bag what I'd been saying their goal was all along. They want the judge to legally reinterpret the law to now say it prohibits sales anywhere if you merely possess or produce food that ever crosses into Pennsylvania. Even if it's not for the Pennsylvania consumer market, doesn't matter. If you ever cross into Pennsylvania with food intended for sale anywhere, or you make any aspect of a food item anywhere in Pennsylvania, you are now a criminal unless you get a permit from the state of Pennsylvania. Unless Pope Redding, the Secretary of Agriculture, blesses your food, you can't eat it. It goes even further. They want to redefine the word sell to, in thing, to include not selling. They, they want to include the word sell. Barter. Yeah, de delivery. No, no, not even beyond barter. Delivery. If you have food with the intent to deliver it hmm. to any other person, regardless of whether it's intent to sell. What does that mean? Potlucks are now a crime in the state of Pennsylvania. Unless that was a, came from, if it came from your kitchen and not a PDA permitted food facility, you've now just committed a crime. You take food over for Thanksgiving, or you're preparing it for Thanksgiving, and you did it in your own kitchen, not from a PDA facility, you just committed a crime in Pennsylvania, according to the PDA. You you want, you want Easter brunch? Crime. Thanksgiving lunch? Crime. All of it a crime now in the state of Pennsylvania. Because they, they want the word to sell to include not selling, to include delivery of food. Period. End of story. Just delivery of food. With the or the intent to deliver food. That's all. So all charitable actions now banned. You cannot deliver food from one person to another without that food coming from a PDA permitted facility. And I've been telling people this was about the state wanting a complete monopoly on all food. They want to be able to go into your fridge, your freezer, and say, you can't have this food. So they want to be able to search it, detain it, and destroy it like they did to Amos Miller at will. I mean, they did this to Amos. They came into his food from his kitchen, made on his farm, and said, we're going to ration to you 
what food you can feed your own family and your own pigs. That's how nuts the PDA is. And there are a bunch of politicians in Pennsylvania. Oh, it's not that bad. Now they put it in writing. It can't be disputed anymore. So we'll see. They're trying to intimidate the court. Kind of like they're trying to intimidate Judge Cannon. Saying, you better do this or we're going to appeal. And da, 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 da. The judge promised everybody publicly he would follow the law and he wasn't going to write the law. He lectured me saying, Mr. Barnes, I'm not here to amend the law. I'm not here to usurp the legislative function. Well, that's now what the PDA is asking him to do. They're saying to add this word, add this word, add this phrase, add this. The words, no, to, uh, no matter who the cust where the customer resides, doesn't exist in the law. But they want that to be in the injunction. The words from the Commonwealth don't exist in the law. But they want that added to the injunction. The words to deliver food don't exist in the law. But they want to add that to the injunction. So the judge keeps his word to everybody in that courtroom and simply follows the law, doesn't try to rewrite the law, then Amos Miller should absolutely prevail. Uh, if no matter what happens, there probably will be an appeal. But this proves what I've been trying to scream at people now for over a year. This is a coordinated campaign of the government to monopolize the food supply. Con what did Kissinger say? Control food, control countries. People remember him saying about control money, control the world, control fuel, control continents. They forget the very first thing he said, control food, control countries. They control your body. They control you. If you don't own your body and what goes into it, they own you. They own your body. And PDA is out to do that in the state of Pennsylvania. And because so many lazy Republicans in that state are asleep at the wheel, they is the only reason why they can abuse their power so badly. But they should be watching the clock because there's, not only has Robert Kennedy denounced this prosecution, Thomas Massey, big agriculture congressman, denounced this prosecution. Uh, Brownstone Institute and leading independent organizations, think tanks and foundations denounced this prosecution of Amos Miller. You can soon expect United States senators and a certain former president to be denouncing this prosecution. So they're going to get a lot more than they bargained for because they're obsessed with putting little Amos Miller out of business, trying to crush him by every means they have. Uh, but thanks to ordinary everyday people out there, 1776lawcenter.com is where you get all the info. If anybody says what it's about, go to 1776lawcenter. We're, we're putting up the complaints, the legal documents, the transcripts, the court proceedings, the public proceedings, interviews, all the information right there you can get and share with people. This case is about our rights to decide what goes into our bodies uh, and not have the government and Bill Gates have a complete monopoly on our food supply. As I was talking about with Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew didn't even know a lot of this. Uh, the and you know, Dr. Drew needs to drink some fresh milk, uh, <laughs> milk right from the cow. He, he was like, he was a little nervous about it. It's like, if you, the moment you drink it, you'll never be nervous about it again. You'll ask yourself, the, the, uh, according to the government, it's better than cocaine, and that's why they got to ban it, because it's like cocaine, according to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. That's how nuts these people are, uh, these low IQ lord asses that want to run our lives, uh, these people who are walking, talking, physical examples of why you don't want their food pyramid, as Dr. Drew pointed out. So the uh, uh, so well, we, we filed our opposition this week. We'll see what the judge does. Uh, if the judge does what he promised to do, then it will be up to the government to appeal. If, uh, if the judge goes back on that, then we'll have to appeal and we'll bring a federal civil rights action. This violates the supremacy clause. It violates the commerce clause, violates the right to travel clause, violates the privileges and immunities clause. It violates First Amendment rights concerning political association and religious expression. It, it violates Fourth, Fifth, and Seventh and Eighth Amendment rights that concern uh, bodily autonomy and privacy and due process of law and property without it being taken from you without just compensation. Our core constitutional liberties, the touchstone of it is food freedom, as Thomas Jefferson himself said. Robert, I was going to say something and I just totally lost the thought. It doesn't matter what I was going to say. Uh, it's wild and we'll see where that goes. I was going to get into the Bobolinsky versus Goldman suit before we head over to vivabarnslaw.locals.com. I wanted we, to say something. We got foreigners claiming they have a right to work, which is interesting. I well, mean, okay, that's sorry. obvious. That's if you look at our jobs report, 
all the jobs under Biden have only been going to foreigners. Well, Robert, what, what was Americans it, what, have been losing jobs for four straight years. It's all going to foreigners. The the federal judge that allowed or said illegals have the right to carry. I I I was trying to make sense of that. Do you know what's going on with that? Well, the, now there's part of that that is true. I agree with him. So because I'm saying that, look, I I wouldn't mind. I I I I I wouldn't mind having a gun. Foreign, foreign right, <laughs> foreign workers' rights suit that is correct. Whether they're right about the discriminatory animus and the preemption issues are are, are I think still subject to debate. But the issue is. The Constitution is mostly a restraint on the government that is in didn't create, but recognizes the rights of the people. By definition, those rights can't come. Like sometimes I'll get this from conservatives who forget. They'll say, oh, you have to be a citizen to have these rights. So uh, citizenship comes, derives from your relationship to the government. It's not something you already have. You don't have citizenship natively without a state's existence. It's, it's, co it's dependent on the state. By contrast, the Bill of Rights wasn't about rights being given to us. It was rights we already have. And so, and that was our rights as people. That means it's not dependent on citizenship. So that's why I've always told people, don't look at who's suing. Look at what the government, who is being sued. Is the government doing something they're prohibited from doing? The, and in that context, absolutely, in my view, people, regardless of citizenship status, are protected under the Second Amendment. They're also protected under the 14th Amendment, which protects due process of law and equal protection because it says the people. It's not limited to citizens. There's only there's only a few provisions in our Constitution that are conditioned upon citizenship. No, no and no argument that the people was intended to be citizens. No, no, not at all. Be, because the reason is because it's the all humans have these rights. All humans. That's where the, the rights weren't given to the government. They were they were take they were given the people already had them and the this was just a recognition of by the way government you can't you can't infringe on these because these are human rights universal rights and they apply wherever the government is up to something so it doesn't matter who it is the government's the government can't say you're no longer a citizen we now get to take away your rights not unless you're that lunatic lunatic judge Ludig who said you could just call him an enemy combatant and take away all his rights right that's that's why we want the people to be wide and robust not only is it principally important as a matter of principle because it re recognizes the constitution's recognizing rights not granting them not creating them simply recognizing their prior existence but also because otherwise the government will start relabeling us and taking away and allow and doing illegal well, things they should to call, call you domestic terrorists and take away your guns call exactly. you a red or, i and understand so the, the people suing saying they're right under the constant florida passed a law saying we don't want these uh we don't want people from china having jobs in the universities and schools and a few other countries. Now, to be honest with you, it was grandstanding by some of the people in Florida, like they're going to really change the world in this regard, but okay. Um, so but some of them sued, saying this is really, you know, the Constitution limits the state of Florida to the 14th Amendment, applies to all the people, whether citizen or not, green card holder or not. And so the, uh, the issue is, is it a supremacy clause violation because the executive branch has the exclusive prerogative over immigration and, uh, and national security? Is it an equal protection violation because they're saying you are presumed in unqualified if you have this ancestry? And is it a procedural due process violation in the way they go about this? Uh, the law, uh, the, the, the challenge has good constitutional grounds. There's some balance to be brought here because are, is it going to be the case that, to me, foreign individuals is different than foreign governments. It's my issue with TikTok. Foreign government control, I think you're fair game limiting access to the U.S. market. For an individual control, uh, and then when it starts getting subjective, and you think someone works for a foreign adversary, what does that mean? Just using ancestry as a proxy? Okay, so you're from China, you're from Cuba, you're from Venezuela. We're, we're going to presume you can't be work. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the law went too far. Is is the short answer? I think the, yeah, the lawsuit is probably going to prevail. And and you're consistent with the um, oh geez, Robert, what's the Japanese case from World War II? Yeah, um, Korematsu. Korematsu. You, oh, your grandparents are Japanese. You don't have a right to religion anymore. This is why we want all the people to be included. No right of religion. No right of political expression. No right of association. No right to even your business. No right to your home. No right to your family. No right of self-defense. No right of privacy. No right against unlawful searches. No right to just compensation for your takings. I mean, I mean uh, uh, it's all the people. It's about what the government can't do. It's not about what we, the people can or can't do is about what the government can't do. The government can't do this to anybody, and we want to keep it that way. 
foreign governments is different than people. Uh, that's why I've always drawn that distinction. And that should be the, the proper target of concern is foreign governments. But anybody who thinks Dan Crenshaw is really there to help defend you from China should probably, you know, take a look, you know, is looking at things a little one eyed, you might say. <laughs> Okay, now, we're, Robert, we're going to head over to, uh, to locals in, in two seconds. I want to read a few of the chats here. I think somebody's figured out the hack here. Give $1 chats and uh, I'll pay ex exorbitant attention to them. The Engaged View says, the first time I heard the devil with the dance with the devil saying, it was Joaquin Phoenix in the movie 8mm. I know, that's where I got it. That's where I stole I've, it from. I've never seen that movie because I've seen enough actual 8mm. Well, says, remember, when you dance with the devil, the devil doesn't change. The devil changes you. It's a it's a great expression. I have never seen that movie because I've movie, seen enough. Dark, dark yeah, movie. no, no, I've seen enough it shit. Makes, on the uh, it almost makes Seven look like a heart uplifting film. <laughs> mm -mm, good. I don't Gators. recommend that film, by the way. I always spoil horrible films. Seven, horrible film. They kill her at the end. They chop her head off. <laughs> horrible film. Go watch it. What's in the box? What's in the box? I remember that. His wife. Tra his wife. That's who's in the box. Don't traumatizing. Watch it. It's a nihilistic anyway. film. It's a, shot, it's, a, it's a disgusting movie and it reminded me a lot of the artwork of joel peter whitkin and if anybody doesn't know who he is he's a new york photographer he used to make still art out of cadavers that he would get from mexican uh morgues because you couldn't get the cadaver parts in america P joel peter whitkin if you're into that crap i'm i in france i discovered it of all places okay P a pewter skull 67 mm -mm, good gators love little dogs and canadian midgets i'm not technically a midget but i'm quite short Attila the Honey, question for Barnes. Your thoughts on circumventing the swamp by calling an Article 5 convention of the states. We've talked about this many times and getting 38 states to amend the Constitution. Robert, what do you say? 30-second answer? There's, there's risk to it. Yeah, I mean, it's, the devil will be in the details. Don't answer the details. Cannon could let go to trial with a favorable jury instructions. Unappealable Burns shared court time with other yep. bogus cases. Oh, yeah, Burns. Okay, fine. And let's Trump claim victory with the judge of jury before election. Yo, Barnes, as a fellow lawyer, you are a savage for calling up the judges. Right there with you. Major respect. Rumble on, Aviva. Let's fucking go. LFG, let's freaking go. Sorry. Now I'm going to read these real quick. Like, Hans, one pack. Any settlement involving government funds should require a judge full evidence to sign off. Just, to, just identify all boxes when asked. Oh, as all boxes. The right to medical procedure for religious whatever will lead to... That, okay. Mm -mm, good. Oh, yeah, we got this guy before. Oh, so there might be a bot here. Anyways, either way, thank you for all the the the, the, the tip, the rumble rants. Now what we're going to do is finish up this stream on Viva Barnes Law, datlocals.com. And uh, we'll, yeah, I'm going to we read the... Uh, juvenile court immunity. We got uh, CIA Congressman Representative Goldman sued for libel by the oh, Biden whistleblower. Good. Bob Alinsky. Uh, and we got uh, the... The, the insanity that's happening to victims of vaccine mandates by courts uh, allowing corporate corrupt corporate defendants like 3M. For I found out 3M, they left off the rest of their slogan. Their name is supposed to be 3M efforts. Uh, <laughs> I forgot, I didn't, didn't realize that. Explains them a lot better. Uh, but they're harassing, you know, the if you they discriminate against you for religious reasons, and 3M people, we now have them in, on deposition admitting their, their discrimination, admitting they targeted Christians for discrimination in particular, admitting that they, they didn't think like Christian science was actually a religion, religious belief. That, that's the insanity we are dealing with. Wear, wear a hijab. There are preferred religions. Wear a kippah. There are preferred religions, and there are disfavored religions. It's so amazing that Islam is a favored religion. These people are like a different level of insanity. Well, the, I mean, the, I, I, so, I, so you're going to favor the least tolerant religion that as soon as you're there, they're going to throw you off the top of the top of the building I, well, I mean, Robert, like lbgtq for palestine uh hey want well, go set up a shop there see how long that works there in gaza for you good luck um okay <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna not say anything right now what i was going to say though get on over to locals we're gonna carry on with this party all the chats are gonna be read there um robert what do you have on for this week um Oh, that's a good question. I, I think there's some somebody, there's probably somebody. I mean, I got, we have the opposition to the motion to intervene and motion to dismiss in the Brooke Jackson case due uh, a week from Monday. So that's going to take up a lot of time. Then uh, I got multiple other legal client matters that take up a lot of time. So I don't know how many, uh, I don't know if I'll do any. I'll probably do one interview maybe this okay. week. Uh, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, but, I'll, but I'll be back with Bourbon with Barnes. Uh, throughout this week 
uh, at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. And I'll tell you this, Robert, I've got a special birthday gift for you for your 50th. Oh, yeah, we got Come a Saturday on. party. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Saturday. So birthday party. I got to go to Ottawa. I don't want to go back to we Canada. but I was, I've been signing some stuff. We got some little gift packets for people. We're going to have a silent auction. We'll have some live entertainment, some great food. Uh, old school place and it's just great to catch up with everybody and it's a great fundraiser to support the amos miller and other cases at uh, 76 1776 lawcenter.com well and, and i've got a nice 50th birthday present come for you it's straight up gangster unique one old. of a kind that's what i'm getting is old that's why i keep old robert and we're not getting any younger but we will never be any younger uh ending on rumble viva barnes law dot locals.com come over now and stay tuned next week is going to be great bye-bye rumble locals here he comes okay we should be good on locals we're still good okay now i'm gonna go to tip questions i'm gonna go bring him a scroll all the way up to the top oh geez louise load more messages don't make me do it more than once okay greg 0081 eight dollars can you draft a letter for us to send to our representatives concerning the amos miller case food freedom good idea yeah great 76 law center we'll put that up good one of the great, great. utilities of that is Otherwise, you get state bars that say you're giving legal advice and da da da. So all like the vaccine mandate opposition le letter templates and all those are going to be up at 1776 Law Center because that's just uh, an independent organization doing independent things. Use it your own risk and use it your own benefit. Gray 101, five bucks. Now that Rep. Jamie Raskin and the CIA have debunked the whistleblower claims, will Congress be able to publish it, to publicly verify the source? Oh, it's sarcastic. Now that Raskin and the CIA have debunked the whistleblower. No, we'll get there. Gray 101. How dedicated is Trump to regressing consumer prices, price inflation, back down to pre-pandemic levels? I think an open I mean, market. Well, I mean, say like uh, opening the market will have that effect and maybe national, not nationalizing, oh. but bringing back home some energy production might have that impact as well. Oh, yeah. Deaver and Robert, this is what I was talking about on my super chat. Little Rock, eight sleep. I'll get there in a second. I'm going to open that, but I'm going to come back here. Ooh, extraordinary sleep. Okay, I'm going to look at that in a second. Uh, and then I'm going down here. Bill Brown, not impressed by a two-minute eclipse. One time Kid Rock didn't see any the sun for three damn was it, days. Was the eclipse today or tomorrow? It's tomorrow. I, I have a bad feeling something bad is going to happen, but I don't want to put the bad juju in the universe. Denise Antu says, I'll say it for you, David. As a white woman, I feel that white liberal women are a bane on our society. I won't say that, but I might be thinking it. I'm not saying There's that. a lot of nanny state. I mean, you know who said that? James Carville. It's the Democratic <laughs> Party. He goes, we're losing minority men. We're just losing them. We're losing them permanently it's because we got all these whiny w women running around. <laughs> so Carville, he did, and he was funny. He was, he was trying to use the traditional re reference, you know, black, Hispanic, Mexican. And you realize, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. People of color, okay? Young people of color. But you can tell he's irritable about even having to say it. Well, Rob, I, I'll, I'll the tell old you. populist side of him that has been dead for like 30 years. I'll, I, 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 People will be angry with me, and I sometimes feel like I'm failing myself by swearing. But this woman here says, Marlene Robertson, whether or not it's a real human, a vote blue, yada, 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 back it up here. She says, um, MAGA trader Mike is a mass murderer who has blocked aid for Ukraine for six months. When the good men do nothing, evil will prevail. To which I said, and you sent a generation of Ukrainians to the slaughter for your proxy war against Russia, you sick fuck. And I'm sorry, I'm swearing a lot these days. I don't necessarily feel good about it. But like, these are the liberal, the liberals who are rationalizing their own slaughter of people. And now I understand, like, Hitler was left. I mean, he's a national socialist. He was a left wing dude. And yeah, I understand. The, what's the tick uh, talker. No, uh, the history guy that's on YouTube does a great breakdown of all that. Oh, uh, uh, his, uh, history legends. No, uh, he's great. But no, this guy's called I, something tick, I think. T I K, I think. Oh, the channel. I don't know. Uh, I, I would thinking, love to have him on a sidebar one of these days. Well, we need to get that. We need to get who he is. I'm, I, I know Black Pigeon or he, Black. He does all these great. He's, he's done massive dives into everything related to World War II and everything that led to it. There, there's people in our channel that know it. Tick we'll, history. We'll, that's it. Tick history. T I K. Tick history. Yep. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go look it up right now. He's great, but he explains in particular how Hitler's unique form of socialism what predicted and previewed everything that would happen that Hitler did. I maintain that the government is breaking the rules on every indictment. I've been challenged to find the broken rules for the obstruction of justice charge. Please help. August B-37. Yeah, the there isn't any. I mean, it's, it was, they're redefining it to saying you uh, uh, said something we don't like. 
We're going to call that obstruction of justice. We're going to call that threats. We're going to call it intimidation. We're going to, you know, I mean, that's what they're doing. That the, there's no specific, I mean, lawful, like there isn't, okay, you got this subpoena. And in response to this subpoena, you tried to bribe a witness into not responding. Well, there's, Robert, there's nothing. There's, there's, there's no. nothing. Quitting is not an option. Thank you for fighting for the people, says Mandalici. DTQC. Oh, somebody's Viva got a happy birthday to a dog in there. Cute little dog. I skipped over a few. But I, I have to skip over. Viva, I'll be in the Eastern Townships for the eclipse. I have a telescope with a solar filter. Will be most the most beautiful picture. Also, the media here made articles about the risk for pets and plants. Yes, they really did. Holy hell. Kenny Diaz, there are no tasking memos for the 302s regarding the election fraud in 2020, and we do have memos from Barr to the DOJ and FBI to defer to state authorities to do investigations. The corrupt state investigated themselves and found nothing wrong. Dictum, Viva Fry, you don't think for a second Biden wouldn't call off Trump's Secret Service to put him to... Well, I, I actually think they would. They want, they want him to get... Um, uh, pew pewed to quote salty cracker. I don't want to say it. I, I, I hate the thoughts. Good for you, Robert. Call them out for their corruption. Ali Michael. Cliff Norman. I right, my tongue. Trump should focus on fixing the country, but establish the reckoning council with made up of Peter Navarro, Robert Barnes, and Roger Stone. I, I would keep Roger Stone off of it just for politics. Yeah, I like no, him. No, Steve Bannon. Yeah, Bannon's good. I'll get credit. Ba Bannon's been out there uh, hitting the media campaign, debating with a bunch of these commies, like the ones that. What's his name? Who pretends he's a Hunter Thompson fan? That schmuck uh, on Showtime, the show, the circus, the uh, and the other guy that had a necklace on. That was a huge, you know. That tells you everything you know about that guy. He's not like a cool Hawaiian necklace. It's necklace, necklace time. The uh, and and Bannon was great at pushing back on a lot of stuff. We got if Trump is so arrogant as to think that it is all about him, while he is our real allies get harassed into oblivion. How is the second term going to be any different than the first? Yes, yeah, Red for, Dallas. He, there's a mixture of good people and bad people around him, mm -hmm. and it's up to the to those that support Trump that he listen more to the good people, and sometimes that means calling him out. Sometimes that means uh, boosting him when he's on the right side. Stupid Dassel, five bucks says the two women were being arrested for filing bogus protective orders. Ursula G, there's a big case going on right now, and the NGOs are suing Paxton, so we can't send back illegals. A whole bunch of amicus. Uh, briefs are being written. Do you know anything about it, Barnes? Yeah, uh, my guess if you trace and track it, you'll find connections to George Soros, the United Nations, and the Biden administration. <laughs> Gray Jedi says Muslim women wear those fancy clothes under the traditional repressive clothing. Yeah, and have uh, malls. That's I, figured and... I was in London. I was like, wow, how interesting. It's... F Sterling it's continually. Continue my not financial advice from last week. Rumble stocks dropped this week, but that's okay. It just means I can buy more at a cheaper price and continue to support my favorite Rumbler and locals. VivaBarnesLaws.locals.com. Mail order bride. Hold on. Let me just click on avatar. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. I click on your avatar. Uh, the, um, this NOLA Super Bowl. What does NOLA Super Bowl mean? Is no, obviously, oh, okay, is obviously discriminatory. How do we fight this? Oh, maybe they're talking about something else then. Um, let me see who the, the, oh, it's mail order bride member since December, 2020. So it's legit, but she's got an American flag over. Okay. So that's funny. It's the, the, the name. Hold on. I just lost everything now. Meal. No meals on wheels delivered to home cooked meals. Yeah. I'm going I'm to skip through. Cause we got to get to the $10. Maybe I missed it, but what's going on with Louisiana banning the WEF, the WHO and the UN? What's the play here? Does it have teeth? Raga Barnes. No, I have just no mostly idea. rhetorical. And then we got Bobby Bobolinsky has FU money. Does he, though? And will not have his name tarnished. I believe he speaks truth. Change my mind. Robert, no. Bobolinsky. I mean, the problem is, you know, it's that same lawyer that brought all the Nunez suits. And it's the reason why we're discussing it, you know, here uh, rather than on the, the live during the Rumble thing. But, but hold on, Robert. Robert, this goes on YouTube tomorrow with this part. Yeah, in, I know. In so I won't go into much detail. It's just, it, it, the, it, remember the Nunez cases that didn't go anywhere? Yeah, I remember Same that. lawyer. And the problem is he keeps making some basic mistakes. Like, for example, he cited the speech and debate clause in talking about suing Goldman. The problem is, as anybody who followed my Covington case, he, I mean, he, he shouldn't have brought the suit in the District of Columbia. It should have tried a circuit that hasn't yet made a ruling on this. The D.C. Circuit already has a very broad interpretation of the Westfall Act. Mm -hmm. So the case will that. just get dismissed by bringing suit. And it, it, it doesn't appear from the letter that he wrote Goldman. 
that he even knows the Westfall Act applies. Westfall Act is federal immunity. Now, it shouldn't apply, but the D.C. Circuit has said it applies. Yeah, it says complete immunity for all for everything, and, I, I, and in particular defamation. You can't sue for defamation, anybody that's a con in that circuit. Now you can't do it in a bunch of circuits. It's ridiculous. I challenged it. But if you're going to bring that kind of suit, bring it in a jurisdiction that is like Second Circuit, where Goldman lives, is where you could bring it because they've been busy trying to gut the Westfall Act to screw Trump. So you would force them, if you want to screw Trump, you got to screw Goldman. Uh, and, you know, that's that would have been the smart place to bring it, not the D.C. Circuit. At the risk of being called an anti-Semite, I will say this. Daniel Goldman is a world-class piece of shit. And well, he's, he he's have, his only national identity is CIA. <laughs> it's born, bred, and from Langley. That's his only. Uh, but, well, so Robert, but so I, I, origin. I don't want to be totally ignorant here. I just want to say that Goldman replaced Schiff as the world's biggest jackass. But um, he so he was in he the CIA. Deep, Goldman deep, deep, deep state ties. Deep. But this. He's this been is the not good. Deep state advocate ever since he's been in Congress. But this is not good to counter the narrative that Jews control everything. So how the hell does Goldman have deep ties with the CIA? Probably not the best name either. <laughs> if, if you wanted to avoid stereotypes, <laughs> old man. Well, it's it's the most stereotypical Jewish name that you've ever seen. How, but how does he have deep ties? Like, what yeah, are that, his that's, ties? That's a Fletch thing when he's pretending to be a doctor in Fletch too. He's like, I'm uh, go to go to go to go to burger. <laughs> the, uh, trying to continue to be somebody who has a fake doctor name, but uh, you know, they, they sh it, it shows that I, I get why this lawyer has got a lot of these cases, but he doesn't have the best track record. And um, as soon as I saw, it, I was like, okay, how is he going to avoid? It's like, okay, you're going to have the Westfall Act issue. Bring it in the Second Circuit where Goldman's from. Perfect place to sue. You got venue. And not only that, what would happen if you got a jury in D.C.? You don't what, want a what? jury in D.C. Don't bring any suit in D.C. unless you have to. Where is Goldman from? New York. He's a he's a New York congressman. Okay. He has been coordinating behind the scenes all the Trump prosecutions. How do you know that, Robert? That Bear that that has come out in a range of places. Bearing in mind, this will all be intact on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Oh, mother! God. It, it's very bad. It's very bad. Like I try. I you I'm not trying to give butt buddy. Well, but, but they, I'm not trying to skirt stereotypes. I just can't blame people for making observations. You got Goldman, Schiff, Nadler, uh, Boxer. Then you got Vinman. They, penguin? I, like, Nadler the Penguin? I mean, that even looks I, like I, the Penguin. He, even, well, he, you know, the, Colin Farrell's going to play the Penguin in new, new Mac show or HBO or whatever it is. The, and I was like, man, that reminds me of Gerald Nadler. Have you well, seen him walk? Have yes. I, mean, like dude, I, I, I believe I've seen him defecate his pants i'm not maybe i'm wrong robert i'm going to go to ginger vampire ten dollars says barnes it's too bad viva doesn't watch the high wire dell covered the canadian issue that they are oh son of a gun that they are trying to make it impossible to get but no dude I, I first of all i actually have a former client who operates in the field of um supplements in canada so i think i should have some insights in there sooner than later did you see where the cdc is going after raw milk and products for bird yeah. flu connection yeah, they're, Cat zap. They, they're nervous about the Amos Miller case. And so they're trying to put out the scare and they're nervous in general. If people realize why are we concerned eating? I mean, think about it. The historical definition of adulterated is something that's in a food product. That's not supposed to be there. That the only products pushed by the FDA and the PDA and all the other variations thereof are adulterated. They're all adulterated. <laughs> they're all not original. They're all not organic. They're all, I mean, they're, everything has chemicals, preservatives, additives, something in it. It's completely made fake, like Bill Gates' meat, completely fake. Why is Bill Gates buying up so much farmland? He doesn't believe in traditional farms. So, well, what do you think that's about? He wants to, This is the guy who says there's too many people in the world, and we need to shrink it. If everybody gets vaccinated, we can reduce the population by 15%. <laughs> if you I know more Bill Gates food, then your population will be shrunk another 50%. Birthday well, gift, Robert. He's doing his progeny with Epstein. Remember, he was part of that whole Epstein project. Yes, it's, it's, it's fucking Robert. He's going to their own little little Epsteins and little Gateses. Uh, hold on, Gates wife divorce Epstein. Epstein. I, I mean, people don't know this. The philanthropist added that she realized their marriage just wasn't healthy. Couldn't resist. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gates, I'll get that. I'll get the. I'll get the actual quote in a second because she divorced him because of his relationship with Epstein, in, in, at least in part. 
Birthday gift for Robert. Do you have a copy of Tiedman's Treaties on the Limitations of Police Power? Great Libertarian oh, 19th. Great. No, that, 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 that'd be awesome. Uh, I'm going to scroll up here. We got a beautiful Frenchie. Do, S. Reina, Arena for real. You would have got me with this if, had it not been $5. Say happy birthday to Louis. He turned one yesterday. Just so you know, that dog's going to make me cry. What's up? Oh, crap. I've got a child who's coming in. Get out five minutes. Get out five minutes, and I'll, and I'll be there in a second. Or come in and say hi to everybody. But hold on, I want to I want to share this picture because this dog. Do you do you know what that dog looks like? That looks like Barney, and I love that dog. Um, and I was gonna say something, but anyway, uh, happy birthday! I know. Get get, get out. <laughs> All right, come say hi. Come say hi. He wants to say hi. Hi. How did it feel? How did it feel when the when the alligator stole your great fish? How did it feel when the alligator stole your great fish? Good. <laughs> this is this is historical revisionism. Uh, uh, I'll be up there in five minutes. Get out of here. Boom. Yeah. Oh, you can stay here and listen to us. You, he'll get smarter. But this is learning by osmosis. I'm going to go to the other. Oh, as, uh, Rain, Raina for Okay, so uh, Robert, I think we got. Will you be? Uh, you got. Hey, Robert. Any progress being made slowing down the Trump victory la lap regarding the non-vaccine? Yeah. The the. Uh... The, there's there's good people in his camp that are paying attention to some of these cases. So that that that's how I'll put it. Okay. So the Amos Miller case is now on his horizon. The Brooke Jackson case is on his horizon. So let's uh, hope it makes progress in the way it needs to. And again, right. great credit to Bobby Kennedy, because you know I, I thought I understood <laughs> why he political answer on January six, but I was glad he reversed that. Every and, time, every time you say Bobby Kennedy's name, I can hear the chat saying he's shilling for Robert Kennedy. <laughs> we want people to do the right thing. More of them do the right thing, the better, and they deserve to be celebrated for it when they do the right thing. Robert, what are the? My kid, he no longer has a thermostat to play with. He's just messing around on the couch. You're gonna break your neck. Oh, that, that was famous back in the Canadian house. <laughs> that, the dude would mess with the thermostat every time. Robert, what do we have left that we haven't talked about before oh, we end just this? just briefly, the way the courts and corrupt employers are handling vaccine mandate religious discrimination cases is they're subjecting anyone who sues to an inquisition on their religious beliefs, an invasion into their most private relationships, a decade-long look at their medical records and psychological records. And if you object, courts are saying, screw you. If you want, if you want to go forward, you have to give up your whole life. And it's because courts are complicit in helping employers get away with religious-based discrimination by engaging in religious-based discrimination through the court process itself. So that's going up to the appeal process. We're going to be fighting it lots of places. But it, it, it also means they should look at amending the law to make it clear this is what's supposed to be is a bona fide religious belief, not whether I am the best version of a Muslim or Christian. And they've well, interpreted it as, oh, it's not bona fide unless you're the best version of that religion. Well, so and, we and, 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 and they whole personal life to persecution. And, 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 and these secular judges get to judge you and question you as to whether or not it's a sincerely the deeply judges held who would never let that happen in any other civil rights case are mm -hmm. eagerly embracing it uh, when, in these cases. All so, right. you know, it's, it's, it's 3M has been the sleaziest of all the defendants so far in pushing this and usually with the help of their diversity equity inclusion corrupt corporate labor law firms um and then juvenile court on the last white bill speaking of juvenile court hold on one second <laughs> <laughs> these uh uh so you anybody's familiar with the whole family court juvenile court system it's very corrupt the one family services family children protection never in the family or children protection business so in a particularly egregious case they got caught lying to the parents, lying to the court, stealing and kidnapping kids based on those lies. So they got sued. They said, we're immune. We're prosecutors. We're, judge we're judicial officials. And finally, the Ninth Circuit said, ah, that's, that's one step too far. Everybody knows you're not actually supposed to lie to people. You're not supposed to deny them of due process. You're not supposed to deny them of their relationship between the family and the child. You're not supposed to lie to courts. So we're going to decide no immunity for you. So that was a very promising indicator at finally getting some relief or remedy against these rogue family child services organizations. All right. Amazing. And th there was one last one. It was from Tipped. Uh, hold on a second. Let me go here. 
I replied to it, but it's not coming up right now. Where can we give to the January 6th defendants from RAL 3981? I, I gave the link in the reply. I'm going to have Jake Lang on tomorrow. I, I don't know how he's allowed to give podcasts from freaking the gulags, but I'm not asking questions. And if I get arrested, Robert, you're my, I need your cell number, actually. <laughs> just to make sure, just in case. Um, Robert, have we done everything we've we've set out to do tonight? Yeah. You'll be, so, you'll be out. We'll be out here in Vegas pretty at the end of the week, dude. I'm going. I'm going from. I'm going from commie Canada to free. I you know Vegas is pretty free. I got to go to Ottawa on the 10th, and I've, I'm doing a panel on the 11th, and then live streams on the 11th, and I'm going to figure out what to do on the 12th, and then straight to Vegas. This kid wants to see. And uh, yeah, I, I, Ethan is practicing his uh, Unabomber look. Yeah. He's hold on a second. Let me let me take this up. He doesn't know who the Unibomber is for uh Phil Locke as a poker player. What's up with you? I don't know. Uh how did it feel when that alligator came in? Not good. How did it feel when you said I don't want to go fishing? And then you go fishing, you say I had the best time of my life. Say it, say it, say it now. <laughs> you know what? I guess. Oh! oh my god. Okay, watch your foot, watch your foot, watch your foot. Hold on. No, no, hold on. Bad things are gonna happen. Get watch it. Um, okay, he almost, he almost took everything down, Robert. Okay, get out of here for a second, and I'll be there in a second. Okay, Robert, um, I will see you get out of here on Saturday. Yes. He wants to kill, destroy this kid. Uh, the, he, uh, a frog. Um, Robert, this has been amazing. You stick around. We'll say our proper goodbyes um, after the kid is done making noise. Everybody out there, I'll be live tomorrow, 6 o'clock, guaranteed. And probably maybe live during the day. We'll see. Tuesday live, Wednesday en route, maybe live Wednesday night, Thursday live, definitely, and Friday we'll see. So, Robert, it's been amazing as always. Everyone out there, enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I will see you all tomorrow.